attention again. I still see pink slips that people are filling out or wondering should they fill one out. It's going to be very, very important on those cases that are called quasi-judicial Z cases that you sign up to speak here because if you do not speak here, you cannot speak at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. Okay? It's where my husband going to speak for me. Yo, if you got some concerns as being the wife, you need to get your voice on the record as well. That's critical on these type of quasi-judicial proceedings. And if you never spoke at one of these before, we got a good board, we got a good chairman, you can relax and we'll work you through it, okay? We'll help you to get through it. So don't be nervous. We've been there, we've done that, and we still get nervous. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'd like to hereby call to order the Escambia County Planning Board rezoning meeting for August 2nd, 2022. Please ask you to turn your phones on silent or any kind of noisemakers on silent to not interrupt the meeting. And at this time, I'd ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Okay, at this time I'd like to um, note that we do have a quorum. We are missing two voting members and uh, our school board member at this point. They may come in uh, later, I'm not sure, but we do have a quorum. Um, staff, do we have proof of publication of the meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, and does that publication meet all the legal requirements? Yes, sir. Okay, Chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal. So moved. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Board members, you've been previously provided uh, meeting minutes uh, for the last meeting. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those meeting minutes? All right, hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Motion, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> The rezoning hearing package for August 2nd, 
2022 has been provided to the board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept that rezoning hearing package with the findings of facts and the legal advertisement into evidence. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion. Do we have second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The rezoning hearing package with the findings of facts and legal advertisements will be marked and included for the record for all of today's cases. At this time, we'll ask our court reporter to please swear in the members of the staff that are going to be testifying. All right. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> board members, all of these individuals have testified before the board before um, and have been previously qualified as experts in the area of land use and planning. Do any of you have any questions about their qualifications or their ability to offer that expert testimony? All right, hearing none, the chair will recognize these staff members as experts in the area of land use and planning. At this hearing, the planning board is acting under its authority to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on rezoning applications. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature they are like evidentiary hearings, however, they are less formal. All testimony will be given under oath, and anyone testifying before the planning board may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits will be entered into evidence and made part of the record. Opinion testimony will be limited to experts, and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. Before making a decision, the planning board will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable laws. Each individual who wishes to address the planning board must complete a speaker request form and submit it to the staff up here. These forms are available on the back table in the meeting room. You will not be allowed to speak unless we receive a completed speaker request form. Please also note that only individuals who are here present today and give testimony on the record will be allowed to speak at the subsequent Board of County Commission hearing. No new evidence can be presented to the Board of County Commissioners, therefore all testimony and evidence must be presented today. The Planning Board will provide a recommendation for each rezoning request to the BCC. They will then review the testimony, documents, and exhibits, consider the closing arguments, and make a final decision. All decisions by the BCC are final. Anyone who wishes to seek judicial review of those decisions of the Board of County Commissioners must do so in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the date that the BCC either approves or rejects the recommended order of the Planning Board. All written or oral communications outside of this hearing with members of the Planning Board today are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided by BCC Resolution 96-13. As each case is heard, the Chair will ask any Board member who has been involved in any ex parte communication, identify themselves and describe the communication. As required by Section 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code, the Planning Board's recommendation to the BCC shall include consideration of the following approval conditions. Approval conditions. The applicant has the burden of presenting competent substantial evidence to the reviewing board, establishing that the requested zoning district would contribute to or result in logical and orderly development pattern. The appropriate surrounding area with, within which the uses and conditions must be considered may vary with the uses and conditions and is not necessarily the same area that is required for the mailed notifications. A logical and orderly pattern shall require demonstration of the following conditions. Consistent with the comprehensive plan, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use, or FLU, category as described in LDC Chapter 3 and with all other applicable goals, objectives, and policies of that comprehensive plan. If the rezoning is required to properly enact a proposed flu amendment, 
it must be transmitted to the state agency for review. Then that proposed rezoning is consistent with the proposed flu and conditional to its adoption. Consist, excuse me, consistent with zoning district provisions. The proposed zoning is consistent with the purpose and intent with any other zoning established provisions prescribed by the proposed district in the chapter. Compatibility with surroundings. All of the permitted uses of the proposed zoning, not just those anticipated by the rezoning, are compatible as defined in Chapter 6 with the surrounding uses. The uses of any surrounding undeveloped property shall be considered the permitted uses of the applicable district. Compatibility is not considered with potential conditional uses or with any non-conforming or unapproved uses. Also, in establishing compatibility of a residential use, there is no additional burden to demonstrate the compatibility of specific residents or activities that are currently protected by fair housing laws. Appropriate if spot zoning, where the proposed zoning would establish or reinforce a condition of spot zoning as defined in Chapter 6, the isolated district would nevertheless, nevertheless be transitional in character between the adjoining districts or the differences within those districts would be minor or su sufficiently limited. The extent of these mitigating characteristics or conditions demonstrates an appropriate site-specific balance of interest between the isolated district and the adjoining lands. Appropriate with changed or changing conditions. If the land use or development conditions within an area surrounding the property of the rezoning have changed, the changes are to such a degree and character that it is in the public's interest to allow new uses, densities, or intensities in the area throughout the rezoning and the permitted uses of the proposed district are appropriate and not premature for the area or likely to create or contribute to sprawl. At the beginning of each case, as long as there are no objections by the applicant, the staff will present location and zoning maps as well as photography of the property. Next, we'll hear from the applicant and any witnesses that they wish to call. Then we will hear from the staff and any witnesses that they may wish to call. And finally, we will hear from the public, anyone who has completed a speaker request form. Today we have uh, three cases on the rezoning side, quasi-judicial. And before we get started, I just wanted to uh, make a point about those approval conditions. And this comes up just about at every meeting, so this is why I wanted to just explain a little bit, because I know a lot of you, this may be your first time coming to a meeting like this. Those approval conditions that I just read through are the only things that we can consider at this board level, okay? There are other parts of the process, such as the Development Review Committee, the commissioners making their decision on what we recommend. There's other checks and balances in place. If you get up here and you start talking about traffic or drainage, I'm not saying that they're not important issues, but it's not something that's under the purview of this board. We have to stick to those. And when you come up to speak, um, uh, our staff member here will bring those up. Yeah, let's bring them back up again just for a moment here. I know it's complicated. I know there's, uh, trust me, I read it every month just about, except for last month. Thank you, Tim, for doing. Um, it's very wordy, and a lot of you are scratching your head going, what in the world does that mean, okay? Pick one of these categories and try to tailor your comments to one of these categories because that's really the only things that we're allowed by law to consider. Okay, so um, I think that's pretty important because a lot of times folks are concerned about things. And like I said, we don't want to discount your concerns, but I can just tell you we, we can't vote on some of those things that people ask about. So um, we'll appreciate that. At this time, we're going to go directly into our first case. Uh, like I said, we have three cases to be heard. The first rezoning application today for consideration is Z2022-10. Erica Floyd is acting as the agent for Pleasant Grove LLC, who is the owner. 
10085 North Loop Road, 2.7 plus minus acres from low density residential to low density mixed use. At this time, I'm going to, well, I recognize Mr. Adams has joined us, the member of the school board. Good morning, sir. Members of the board, I'm going to ask if there's been any ex parte communication between you, the applicant, agents, attorneys, witnesses, fellow planning board members, or anyone from the general public prior to the hearing. Also ask if you disclose if you have visited the subject property or disclose if you are a relative or business associate to any of the parties. And uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning, guys. No to all. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Note all. Note all. I want to note I was not here last week, and Walker ran the meeting. Apparently, went well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the chairman on ex parte. No to all. No to all. No to all. All right, and um, I'm not sure who we have on technical staff today, but maybe we can try to get someone to look at his microphone uh, if it's possible. Okay. At this time, if there are no objections uh, from Ms. Floyd, the staff will present the photography and the maps. Uh, Ms. Floyd, could you? No objections. Okay. Staff, if you'll go ahead and present the uh, maps and uh, photography, please. Good morning. Allison Lindsay, Urban Planner, Development Services. So, this is the wetlands and the location map of the subject parcel. This is the zoning map showing LDR current and surrounding. This is the future land use map, mixed use suburban. This is the existing land use map. This is the AIPD, it's an AIPD2. This is the aerial photograph of the subject property. And this is the public hearing notice sign posted on site. This is a picture of the subject parcel. And I have a couple more. There's another view of the uh, property and then this is another view of the property on, the, on uh, North Loop. This is looking north across North Loop from the property. This is looking northwest across North Loop. This is northeast across uh, along North Loop and that's the maps and photography. Okay. Board members any questions about the maps or photography? All right, thank you. At this time, Ms. Floyd, if you'll please come forward and be sworn in. Good morning. If you'd please state your name and address for the record. Yes, good morning. My name is Erica Floyd. I'm with Gulf Civil Engineering 2940 Bayview Way, and I am the agent for the owners, Kara and Jim Johnson. Okay. Um, I'd like to just give a little background on the property. It's okay. Been Hold on just a moment, Ms. Floyd. I yes. have some more technicalities we have to go through. Okay. When we're in quasi-judicial, there's a lot of things that have to be written in, uh, read into the record. So, um, have you received a copy of the rezoning hearing package and the staff's findings of fact? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you understand that you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of that plan, and is not in conflict with the land development code? Yes. Okay, yes, thank you. Now you please proceed. Okay. Uh, the site, the subject property, has um, been a manufactured home park for many years, and Mr. and Mrs. Johnson recently purchased the property as an investment opportunity. Uh, the goal of the project is to improve the aesthetics and the function of the property, specifically the environmental function. Uh, there is an existing sanitary sewer septic system on site that has been problematic. Um, and the journey of the rezoning request began with the desire to replace it and install a new gravity sewer 
and lift station on site, which would then connect to a sanitary sewer forest main on the west side of Blue Angel Parkway. So they began conversations with the health department and ECUA to install this new system. Um, ECUA is acceptable to it if it's designed and permitted appropriately. The health department is very interested in having the septic system removed. Um, and, but replacing a septic system, installing this, however, it, it's just 600 feet west of Blue Angel Parkway, which is not a very long distance, but when you're putting in a force main, that can, that can add up. Um, so to offset the cost, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson looked at the option of increasing the number of manufactured homes on the property um, to make the project feasible. So uh, after speaking to ECUA and, and the health department, the recommendation was to reach out to Scambia County obviously about um, the increase in density. They found that the current zoning classification does not allow the increase and the re rezoning option was discussed during a pre-app meeting in May. Again, the goal with this request is to improve the aesthetics. They've recently put in a new fence along the property and ultimately they would just like to improve the function of the septic and sanitary system. So with specific regards to the rezoning request and how it applies to uh, the items you mentioned earlier. Um, being consens consistent with the comprehensive plan, rezoning to LDMU, which would allow for an increase of six units on the property. Um, it's suited and acceptable under the future land use designation of mixed use suburban. Um, it's acceptable as it is a type of residential use, which is allowable within the comprehensive comprehensive plan for 8% to 25% of residential that is within a quarter mile of arterial roadways, which this is. Additionally, the maximum density for LDMU is seven units per acre, which is well within the mixed use suburban maximum density allowance, which is 25 units per acre. And the health department allows 25 units per acre as well for this type of use. Um, consistent with the zoning district provisions, uh, manufactured homes, including new or expanded manufactured home parks, are permitted uses for the LDMU zoning designation. The expansion will meet the site and building permits, I mean requirements, as well as the location criteria set forth in Chapter 3 of the LDC. Uh, additionally, rezoning to LDMU district is appropriate to provide transitions between areas zoned or used for low or medium density residential and areas zoned or used for high density mixed use, which there are in the areas as Allison showed on zoning maps. Um, Compatible with the surroundings, the permitted use is list, as listed and defined for LDMU under Chapter 3 and Chapter 6 of the LDC are compatible with the surrounding areas. These uses are, in general, the same as that of the current zoning, LDR, except for the increase in allowable retail sales and services. With the property's proximity to Blue Angel Parkway, again, it's roughly 600 feet from Blue Angel Parkway, and the low impact of the acceptable retail and professional uses under the new zoning or requested zoning, LDMU, uh, their favorable criteria for the rezoning request. And then if appropriate of uh, spot zoning, I think that's which one we're on. Although the rezoning request would create a condition of spot zoning as defined by chapter six, the isolated district is not too far off from similarly, similarly zoned districts and more intense zone districts such as HDMU and commercial again as was shown on the zoning map. Other LM, LDMU districts as well as the HDMU and commercial zone districts exist less than a half a mile from the subject property. And finally appropriate with the change or changing conditions the permitted uses of the promote, proposed LDMU district are not premature for the area or likely to create or contribute to urban sprawl. The proximity of the site to major arterials such as Sorrento Road and Blue Angel Parkway, as well as the closeness of Walmart, Target, and other strip mall centers suggests that the surrounding areas support the rezoning request. Okay. Board members, questions? Morning. Uh, yeah, I, I, I run by this every week, 
So this is one of the things we get to untangle uh, from past, either lack of planning or, or where or however we've gotten here doesn't matter. But I, a couple questions. First of all, I'm ecstatic if it's going to change from septic to sewer. We're so close to the intercoastal. It's such a problem over there, and our water quality is suffering as a result of it. The thing is, you have a lot of single-family homes, and this has been there forever. It's just been the way it is. Can I ask, given the number of mobile homes uh, uh, that are there now, have they calculated the increase in how many more in total would be added to the property? It would be six. A total of six. A total of six. So it's currently zoned uh, to contain 12 manufactured homes. Mm -hmm. um, because it was four, I believe that the current zoning allows for four uh, units per acre. Um, but due to the size, it's, it's 2.7 acres. The requested zoning allows for seven. So that only right. is an increase to 19 total, yeah. which again is well below what the future land use density would allow. And also what the health department allows is 25 yeah. units per acre. So one of the things I would say is, as a board, we always have to think of what could potentially be there, right. not necessarily the intention of the current owner. Right. However, and uh, I guess it's my question, if they recently purchased this, and I do this more probably for the people, if there, are any, if there is anybody here to speak, either for or against it, their intention, if they just simply purchased it, it would make sense that this would increase the value of the property with the zoning change. But... Do you feel it's their motivation to do that for the property itself and for the current, you know, keeping it as a, a park as it is and just trying to improve on the current conditions? There? That is the way it's been communicated to me because of the way this started. Right. It began with the conversation about the septic system and the, the costs associated with maintaining it. Right. And that in itself um, is, is costly and problematic and they don't I mean no one wants a failing septic system no. especially when you are a new owner of a, of a manufactured home park or any any park that's gonna have uh, residents there that you're you're going to hear about that and just for the board this is extremely close to the intercoastal I mean yes. I, I believe all of that on that we need to worry about getting from septic to sewer because it, it is a problem but anyway that's, thank you very much sure. thank you mr adams yeah, Nate answer this is it this property lay in the in the hazard zone for any espen um, yeah. so that's my thoughts because we bring in that with our new school oh, yes, about sure. the yeah. navy's Sorry. concern and um of course and the navy introduce yourself Horace yes. john director for the planning and zone department and the navy rep mr mr open he can correct me um, it is in the AIPD area, area of influence. Death, thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> it's definitely in an AIPD area of influence. That means that it's one of the areas that, well, the county looked at it because of, because of potential hazardous and conflicts with NES. Now, it is not in an AIPD 1 area, which is much more restricted, but I'm going to say it again. Is definitely in the AIPD area, which has the potential for hazards, but it's not as restrictive or not as restrictive as AIPD 1. The underlying zone in AIPD 2 still can apply, but again, it still is in the AFPIA Influence Planning District. With, with, with not that, more than likely it would not, but it still has the potential because of the area and the close proximity to NES. Mr. Omelette, if I say anything wrong, please correct me. No, you're, you're correct, uh, uh, Horace. Uh, Steve Oplenic, NES Pensacola. Uh, only concern, as Horace was saying about potential, is that it's about 16, 1,600 feet outside of our APZ1. That's Accident Potential Zone 1. So that's the highest risk that, you know, that we look at. So it is outside of it. Um, and it is actually outside of the, the lowest noise zone profile. So uh, you would think that close to the, the runway, it would be pretty high and it's not. Uh, so I did look at that. Um, so it, it's just, it's close proximity. It is in AIPD too. We do generally follow, uh, follow the, the county's uh, uh, 
you know, it's in the LDC. So um, that's it from NES Pensacola. For reference, we have two apartment complexes that are also in the AIPD uh, two zone, correct? We do, as well as the new school. Um, but it is, uh, again, it, we follow the we follow whatever zoning allows. It is. That is yes. We need to talk about that. Steve. Steve, just for clarification, because we have a lot of members of the public that might not be quite as familiar with all our acronyms, but the APZ, the Accident Potential Zone, is really what you consider to be the more dangerous area because yes. that's where a plane would have to ditch if it was having trouble immediately. Although this is close, this is kind of outside of that APZ zone. I think you said that. that that's that correct. correct. Okay. And so everything, everything that is an APZ is generally in AIPD one, as you can see on the screen. You can see how far that is, um, and that's on a turn. <clears throat> that's that, that's that's where the aircraft are making their way back in to uh, to the airfield. So um, just a caution. Okay. Thank you, sir. Horace, you got to be on the microphone. Horace Jones again. And we do want you, since we own this topic, we do want to, again, thank you, thank you, Liazan, representative. We do want to make sure that we still understand that, that when things happen, things that are yet in close proximity can still be dangerous. So the goal of the Scammy County is yet to protect the mission and to work with NES in the protection, but that's the, that's, we had an interlocal agreement that says that. So we, st we still want to make sure that still is a primary agenda. Still protect those areas of either AIPD1 or AIPD2, but yet understanding AIPD2 is definitely less restrictive and the underlying zoning do applies. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, board members? Ms. Floyd, I have a question and, um, the, I know that the health department uh, governs the mobile home parks. Um, so if this is recommended for approval and the commissioners support it, what would be the next step with the health department? The next step is to put in the set, I mean, remove the septic system and put in the gravity sewer and Okay, so they govern station. that process as far as the they, environmental side of it they and everything? don't actually Govern, they're not the permitting agency of that. They are typically the governing of septic systems. Okay. So it would be ECUA that would handle the permit approval, design approval of the new system that would be going in place. Okay. Okay. So I'm sure the health department would want to be notified and um, a participant in ways of the removal of the septic system, but not of the improvements as a result of that. Okay. And, and, they, and, and, we, and we do want to be, we, we do want to proceed with caution on this. Um, we do know that it is referenced. We do know again that that is referenced about the mobile home park. Again, and I know y'all know this, so I want to make sure that we stay on point with that, is that we can, we cannot focus on the use. You got to focus on the other use that has the potential. And that's, that's what rezoning is. Yes, yes, they're saying that it's going to be a mobile home park, but we don't have conditional rezonings. So, so if, this, if this ever proceeds to the next level beyond, we'll make sure that we keep the, keep the direction straight, that we cannot focus on this, this specific use because this is, this, it never was zoned for mobile homes, parks, even with the original zoning. It's just one of those use that. But primarily, and Ms. Adams are going to address those, is primarily single family residential. So that's why they have to do a rezoning because of expansion would require, they can't do it if they did not. But we don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on the potential uses with LDMU. It would allow for other commercial uses that could have an impact on that area of single family homes. I just want to make sure that we keep that in our head. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Ms. Floyd. Anything to say about that? Just that I do understand that there is nothing written that can put a contingency on what 
the owner wants to do with the property and it's unfortunate that there can't be any verbiage that can attach to this but but this is the fact and uh, the way this owner would like to proceed and what will help it be a feasible solution okay. do you have any witnesses to present at this time i do not okay we'll give you a chance to come up for closing statements after the staff and the public has speak, spoken so um if you just want to have a seat up front we'll we'll come back to thank you thank you so much okay staff who's presenting this one allison yes. all right thank you okay again allison Lindsay, urban planner development services so this is a request at 10085 north loop road future land use mixed use suburban uh, to change from ldr low density residential to low density mixed use ldmu Criteria one, consistent with the comprehensive plan. The proposed amendment to the LDMU request is consistent with the intent and purpose of the current future land use, which is mixed use suburban. The rezoning to LDMU is only allowed if the future land use is MUS or MUU. Mixed use suburban allows for residential <clears throat> neighborhoods, non-residential uses, recreational facilities, public and civic, and limited agricultural. So the parcel is within the AIPD2 Airfield Influence Planning District and will not alter the uses in the zoning district. However, protection of military encroachment and incompatibility development is a principal objective. Consistency with the zoning district provisions. And I've listed the purpose of the LDR and then the low density mixed use. It does have the purpose and the permitted uses, which are some of them are retail sales and services of up to 6,000 square feet uh, per lot um, and some other professional services and, and uh, permitted uses. So the permitted use, the proposed amendment is not consistent with the intent and purpose of the, L, of the Land Development Code. LDR is strictly a residential development and is characterized by predominantly single family detached dwellings with limited non-residential uses as the 3.25 LDR um, states which is four dwelling units per acre the LDMU which allows seven dwelling units per acre is to allow a mix of low density and compatible non-residential uses providing for a mix of neighborhood scale retail sales and services and professional offices the commercial component of the LDMU will allow more intense development and a greater performance standard than what is currently allowed in the LDR the subject parcel, as we mentioned, was in the AIPD2, which it does not, <clears throat> it's an additional area extended beyond the AIPD2 uh, one and is sufficiently close to the airfield. And the AIPD2 requirements are the same for all airfields and the densities and the lot, si lot, minimum lot sizes of the underlying zoning aren't modified by the AIPD2. AIPD <clears throat> all the Per permitted uses for the proposed zoning, not just the anticipated by the rezoning, they are comp uh, by the rezoning applicant are compatible as defined in Chapter Six with the surrounding uses. Sorry, I already skipped to number C, <laughs> um, and that's compatible with surrounding uses. Within the impact area for the property that was zoned LDR. Um, their LDR with commercial and LDMU across Blue Angel Parkway, which is a major arterial roadway. The request to rezone to low density mixed use is a zoning which would allow for residential as well as non-residential uses that may not be compatible with the existing residential uses in the, in the area, allowing for an increase in density as well as commercial uses that are not currently allowed in the LDR zoning district. LDMU would allow for an increase in the total number of manufactured homes in an established mobile home park from 12 to 19, which will also need approval from the health department and um, ECUA would be the permitting um, authority for any upgrade for the sewer. Criteria D, appropriate if spot zoning. The request would be considered spot zoning as there is no LDMU zoned properties um, adjacent or near this uh, LDR subject property. Uh, criteria E appropriate with changed or changed conditions. The land uses or development conditions within the area has not changed and the request to rezone would allow any use within the LDMU district including retail sales and services of 6,000 square feet or less as well as to allow more residential spaces in the existing uh, <coughs> development. 
With more intense uses and more available density, there is a possibility for greater traffic on the local roadway. And that's the staff's findings. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Board members, questions? Okay. Ms. Floyd, do you have any questions of staff at this point? Okay. Like I said, we'll give you an opportunity to address some of these points when we go forward. Allison, anything else? Okay. All right. All right, at this time, we do have some members of the public that have signed up to speak. Um, for those members of the public who wish to speak, please again note that only those uh, approval conditions and exceptions described in 2-7 of the Escambi County Land Development Code uh, are considered. During our deliberation, the Planning Board does not consider general statements of support or opposition. Please limit your testimony to one of those approval conditions or exceptions. Also, please note that only those individuals who have completed a speaker request form and are here today give testimony on the record will be allowed to speak at the Board of County Commission hearing. Our first uh, speaker, uh, Jeremy Boucher. Boucher? Boucher? All right. Thanks, sir. If you'll please be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Or your name and address for the record, please. Jeremy Boucher, 10135 North Loop Road. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So I'm here to voice opposition to the plan uh, to move from low density residential to mixed use. <clears throat> with all due respect, I disagree that it's not compatible with the surrounding area. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's a neighborhood. And to move it to mixed use, while we do have discussions about the intercoastal waterway and the importance of that, I agree with. You wouldn't have to change the zoning of this area in order to get sewer. That's a totally different conversation. <clears throat> the surrounding area is a neighborhood with single family homes and to move this one lot in the middle of a neighborhood to mixed use gives it permission to have a commercial enterprise right in the middle of a bunch of homes. While I understand there's a park there already, I wouldn't want a 6,000 square foot retail venture a door down or two doors down. Um, and so my opposition is compatible with surroundings and I'm not necessarily sure if it's appropriate for spot zoning because for, if my if I understand correctly spot zoning is like a buffer or a transition to another area type thing but there's no other lots around that one lot that's anything but low density residential single family homes so it's not necessarily that it's going to be a buffer to some other area that concludes my comments all right thank you sir any questions as in boy, O U C H E R. Questions? Was there a question? No. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Floyd, did you have any questions of this uh, witness? Okay. Thank you. All right. Mr. Larry Downs, Jr. I do. I think there's probably Larry, about. State your name and address uh, for the record. Larry please. Downs, Jr. <laughs> 12156 Hadburg Drive. Pensacola, we all know Florida. who you are, but we still got to do it. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Uh, I think there's probably about a thousand ways that y'all could keep a 6,000 square foot retail facility from going in there and probably everything else uh, from every step along the way. Well, y'all don't have this dot, uh, this I dotted. You don't have this T cross. Yeah, it doesn't meet this criteria, it doesn't meet that. Y'all can stop this. I mean, the, the, I mean, there's so many ways to stop this. Unfortunately, this is where they're at. Uh, we, need, we need housing. We need housing. I mean, this is clear and evident. I mean, and I believe that they're meeting all the criteria required for this. Uh, you know, as far as worrying about what else could go in there, just imagine if this country was started like that. What could be there? We'd have nothing. We'd have nothing. There's compatible uses everywhere, going back a hundred years. You know, the, I mean, it's it's clear and evident. Somehow or another, all these places are still getting along. They're like, well, it's grandfathered in. Well, how, how you know, we all have have options, and one of the options is obviously what they need here. So of course I'm for it. I'm for any time anybody wants to have 
you know, some type of increase in prosperity, you know. So the first thing that people want to do is, you know, say, hey, is it, is it affecting me? What well, is affecting them, even indirectly, if there's no housing or if there's not enough housing, if there's not enough jobs, if there's not enough businesses expanding, of course it's uh, going to affect them. It's going to affect me, you, everybody here. So sometimes in the in the in the rush to what if, you know, what could, we stop in what needs to be. So think about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Downs. Any questions of Mr. Downs? Okay, Ms. Floyd, any questions for Ms. Downs? All right. All right, uh, I think that's uh, everyone who I have signed up to speak on this case. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this case that has not been heard yet? All right, we will hereby close the public comment portion of the hearing. Ms. Floyd, if you'll come back forward, please. Um, I think um, in the staff's findings, uh, they made a recommendation in several categories that it was not consistent with some of those categories. And of course, you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that it meets it so that you can be granted the rezoning. So at this point, we'll give you an opportunity to offer uh, additional findings that may counteract what the staff has uh, put in writing or convince the board members uh, of your case. So if you like to proceed. Well, one of the, and Erica Floyd again, Gulf Civil Engineering. One of the statements that Horace made regarding the current situation, this is not a vacant property. It is currently used as a manufactured home park, which is non-conforming right now. So the fact that, and it, and it has 13, although it's zoned for 12, it has 13 manufactured homes. So it is non-conforming and this move to rezone, which is, a, is one of the lowest um, options for a rezoning request. It's the step up that would be necessary to make the current use conforming. So that request, as well as um, the fact that the request to make it into mixed use, that's the future comprehensive plan plan for this property is to be mixed use. If and when they put in the sep or remove the septic system and, and make improvements to the property, anyone that's going to develop under the LDMU rezoning would have to go through the Escambia County DRC process, which would require stormwater improvements. It would require buffers around the adjacent residential properties. So I, in my opinion and to our request, we find that the request to LDMU from LDR is acceptable. Okay. And we hope you do as well. All right, thank you. Board members, any questions of the applicant or staff? Yeah, yeah I have a question. I don't know if there's anybody on staff that can answer this or if Steve should answer it or whatever. But my curiosity is if Drew Strum Strange happening, they did do another BRAC or they were looking at mission transfers uh, similar to what they did in, at Tyndall about seven years ago. Um, will they take into account what could be done with the surrounding property in making a case for or against, or will they take into account what has been done so far with that property? Will changing the zoning affect their opinion of that property if it doesn't get, uh, if it remains a mobile home park? So I'll take a stab at that. <laughs> We're not allowed to say the B word, so. Uh, I, I think uh, they do look at how property and how uh, the surrounding area uh, works with the mission of, of the base. So that is certainly a, a criteria that if, if that were, if we were ever to go through something like that around NES Pensacola, are, you know, there are some bases that, that don't have this relationship with a county to where they have designated uh, an ACUS like we have. Our ACUS is what, what we're talking about with the, the protection areas. 
Um, so yes, they would look at the zoning, they would look at um, uh, any really issues if they're not able to be solved. Um, we don't seem to have that. I mean, there's a lot of existing houses in, in the area that are sitting underneath accident potential zones that should not be there. But at the time they were built, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have this type of uh, a mechanism to recommend against it. So um, if four more mobile homes showed up on a lot, I don't think that would take NAS Pensacola away. But I think your point is overall, uh, if we had, if we did have this kind of conflict, um, would it be considered? Yes, it would. Thank you, sir. Um, what is the underlying zoning of the multifamily? Is that non-conforming use? It's LDR currently. So it's currently a non-conforming, so-called grandfathered in. It was there before the the maps changed. Okay. And, uh, and, if, and, and, and uh, again, Harris Jones, and and that's, and that's with great respect for Miss Erica Floyd. Been knowing him a long time. Um, very very professional. If you look at the map as is, that was the original R1 zoning, which was very very protected single family homes only. Now those things that were there, they what we call you said it grandfathered in but the one of the purpose of zoning and the and the company's plan is to protect those existing neighborhoods those existing homes so 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 that's why they they allow for the option of a rezoning however there still will be impacts if it is up zone is and at, on how it will impact the surrounding overall i mean that's r1 ldr all of, and that's the that's the lowest zoning that anyone could have in their in their area so that's why this staff had to had basically based upon the black and white language of the land of Mexico, not based upon feelings or maybes or we know how it's it should have been but r1 was their first prior and we changed the LDR with that on that whole area. So that's the dilemma. That's I don't want to say dilemma. That's the issue. That's why we got to look at how it would impact the existing neighborhood uses and the expansion of this uh, up zone. If it is up zone, it still will have an impact that could, that could impact those existing LDR. You could bring in retail. Good, much respect for Mr. Downs. Horace, how far is that commercial property on the east side of? Is that it says calm there? I don't see where it clearly which delineates. Which way? Which way? Uh, immediately to the, uh, I guess that's the east of the property, where it says calm prior to the Blue right, Angel. Right, right, right. And 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 that's because it's hard for me when you guys do broad brush it as LDR, and it should be. Those are all single family homes. But then you, you know, at some point came through with eminent domain, you put Blue Angel Parkway there, and. I don't, you know, we have single family homes that go right up to Blue Angel Parkway on one side. We have uh, multifamily homes on the other. I'm not saying we should just go and mow down, you know, sorry, single family homes, but it's just hard for me to, cons I, I understand, I, I see what you're saying, it's clearly black and white because we made it that way. We threw LDR on there. This is anything but, just like any number of 500 other properties along Gulf Beach Highway that we could pick. My, I have a question for the attorney. Why don't we have conditional uh, why don't we have the ability to do conditional zone changes? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Pyle, the, the code is not set up to allow that. You know, it just, it's, so, it's, it's infuriating. If somebody wants to spend the kind of money to upgrade their property to do something right, and because we have to all be fearful, and I understand exactly why. If I lived, I, th there was a house recently for sale there. I would love to have bought that house. Beautiful house, and I'd probably be in the crowd there uh, being a little concerned myself for the very exact reason yet somebody wants to put money in this place to upgrade it so that we don't have this thing I'm flesh eating bacteria all over the place and yet we're going to punish them and not allow them to do it and say sorry too bad you can't do it it's just it's it's very frustrating to me that we just oh. stop it at that and we can't do something a little bit different now I'm going to get the lecture no you're not going to get a lecture Mr. Pye. <laughs> 
Okay. Mr. Powell, you're not going to get a lecture. I don't give lectures. I just state facts. Um, that issue came up before. Conditional rezonings came up before, even before this board, if you can recall. Um, if, if that is a, a request that, that, that the planning board may want to petition and see if that can happen, but at this time, it came up. It definitely came up. I've been, I've been doing this a long time. Mr. Prissy came up before, but there was never a venue or, or, or a desire for that. But if it needs to come up again, we could, we could definitely see and if that can get that letter development code changed. But at this time, we've got to focus on what we have before us. Regardless of how we may, regardless of what we may need or desire. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I, I just want to clarify because I'm hearing two different things. Is the upgrading the sewage dependent on this new zoning? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. I, I, okay. I just want to get that clarified. Thank you. I believe it would be financially, I think. Financially, they're, they're, yes. They're proper. Financially, you have to have, you know, to get six more residents on there, to, it's, it's extremely expensive to upgrade. Oh, okay. From septic to septic. Okay. Still an owner choice. True. Okay. Correct. Oh. It's it takes away the in, incentive a little bit if you don't have the the possibility of if you have a piece of property that's non-conforming from the very beginning. It's already a manufactured home park, and you can't you want to make improvements to it, but the incentive is, is not there. But I understand a, a contingency, a conditional uh, rezoning is, is a very good idea. Mr. Engel? Yeah, just out of curiosity, the other, the surrounding properties, are they uh, under the ECUA or do they have uh, septic? Do, do we know? I can't speak to everyone, but it is my understanding that there is no sewer in the immediate area other than this force main along Blue Angel Parkway, which would mean septic. Thank you. Could we, um, staff members, could we please bring up the um, allowable uses in the LDMU so the board may review those? Well, obviously the concern is not so much I don't think that you're adding a few more units to the property which again there is a housing demand right now I think it's what potentially could go there if the owners decided to remove the mobile homes um, in this case and it shouldn't matter but do they own the mobile homes or are they renting just spaces they rent, they rent them they rent That's the spaces okay they own the property. And, and you see that, if you, if, if you see that, just provide clarity for it because we got other people that's, if you see that, Mr. Prisky, this is, this is, those retail services, those are commercial uses. Those are commercial uses that, that could basically, if someone decides, so we, we, we want to close down the park and remove everything because it's still not financially feasible, because we're still not making any, any any money and, 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 and zoning financial feasibility is not a zoning criteria it's not one of the criteria that we look at we, we feel for it but it's not one that we look at respectfully um, and that's the thing is <clears throat> look at all of those uses and and they has that's the that's the dilemma that we got to Lawrence, you, you have to explain this to me about once a quarter because I can't seem to remember but there's a mobile home park there that's out of conformance now. Yes, sir. They want to add a few mobile homes to the park, mm -hmm. which is not conforming. Yes, sir. And they want and they want to be able to expand or uh, and put in the sewer system. Why again couldn't they go through a variance process? Because, because the variance. The process that the land development code states, the process, the, the legal process, is not a variance. This is not a variance. This is a zoning. They would need to have a zoning change. 
And this is what we are here today, a rezoning change. Because LDR, which was formerly R1, does not allow for mobile homes, a mobile home park, per se, or mobile homes, or mobile homes. So therefore, the Land Abandonment Code says you cannot expand a non-conforming use because you try to, you don't even want to make it, try to be, we had zoning late, but it's, it's what we have as the as protection that, mechanism. Would that really be expanding yes, a non-conforming yes, use? Yes, sir. According to the rules of the Land Development Code, yes, sir. Huh. It is an expansion. You're it not, is when you're, you're bringing in more the, units. You're not changing the, I'm not, I'm not arguing, you use yes, the sir. expert, uh, uh, but you're not changing the uh, use of the property, so it, it puzzles me why that is, but I get you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can can y'all go to the second page of of the? Uh, thank you. Of the usage. Yep. Yes, sir. That way, that way, everybody gets to see what all would be included in it. And also, Mr. Chairman, uh, with these LDM uses, when you go, th they would have to go through the development review process, and the locational criteria would heavily come into play. And this is on a local road. So a lot of these commercial developments would not meet the location criteria and, and, and other issues of the code, so they would have a hard time being approved. And Horace, can you do just another favor for yes. the people out there and also just for clarity? When you have a future land use of MUS, please silence all uh, yeah. noisy devices <laughs> prior to the meeting. <laughs> I think Oris owes about a hundred dollars to the uh, donut fund at this point. <laughs> That's just this year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just since last month. <laughs> um, when you have a mixed use suburban um, future land use, which basically is you, you're, you're saying that the future of the area is going to be mixed use. It is going to expand but then you have a limitation of the um, residential. Explain why the future land use is important for the global, but the individual is um, locked down to what yes, it is, sir. if you don't mind. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, um, Mr. Russian, you stated it. The future land use category, that's the 35,000 foot level. It is consistent right now. <laughs> you have two, you have the future land use category, which is a quick, quick, quick zoning one-on-one, very, very quick. You have the future land use category, which is regulated by the state legislator. Comprehensive plan, identifying maps. It lists the potential of allowable uses, okay? That's the potential for allowable uses. Now, but the, the comprehensive plan and the state says also, you got to have a consistent zoning category. That's the implementing tool. That would regulate what can go on the site. So the zoning category is consistent with the future land use category, which give a, a broad range of uses. They gotta be consistent. And they and th in these cases, low density residential is consistent with mixed use suburban and LDMU. It does not mean there's going to change to LDMU in the future. The consistent future land those uses are already there allowable. For example, if you want to put a, an inconsistent use that's not allowed, for example, if you want to put industrial in there, it'll be out not consistent because it's not in the range of allowable uses in the mixed use suburban. So we have it's not two zoning things. It, it does a matter of it being consistent with the state statute. So it's not going to be that way in the future. It's already consistent now. And I hope I said that I said that very quickly. I hope everyone understand that. If not I can talk to you more afterwards. Okay. Ms. Floyd, give you an opportunity to give a closing statement before we turn it over to the board for uh, a motion. Thank you very much. Well, again, it's um, the owner's goal to improve the aesthetics and the environmental function of the property. In order to do that, it was explained to them that this rezoning would be necessary. They have a property that is already not zoned for the use that they have. 
So to have the incentive to make improvements to that, impro that property beyond regular maintenance is, is hard just due to the fact they'd like to increase their investment by adding a few more manufactured homes. I understand that there's no contingency on this request to make them, them do, uh, not do the uses that are listed there. However, those uses are low impact. There are churches, professional services that could potentially be done even in a home these days. So the uh, request is just merely to improve the function of the property as it is now and to improve the aesthetics and the investment opportunity. And we feel that it is suitable for the area. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? No, Mr. Chair, I would just suggest prior to any motion we made that uh, I would ask if we can make a motion or ask our attorney how to make a motion to our county commissioners to give county staff the latitude to be able to come up with conditional zoning changes because I'd hate to introduce logic into some of this stuff but I think that it may be extremely useful to allow them to be able to in situations like this Mr. Powell uh, that would not be appropriate at this time or during the rezoning however um, when we get to the next the, the regular meeting um, if the board's desire is for staff to uh, communicate that to the administrator and or the, the commissioners um, you can certainly take that vote at the time and um, have the staff make any other recommendations to the administrator and to the board that you would like to see in the LDHC change okay before we uh, before chair entertains a motion I just want to remind you um, the staff's findings show not consistent in several of the categories so if you're going to make a motion uh, to recommend approval you would have to come up with alternate uh, findings that are appropriate for approval uh, if you're relying on the staff's findings as part of a denial application you can just refer to the to the findings on that case chair will entertain a motion uh, unfortunately we have to base our decision on all potential uses and with that said uh, with respect to staff's findings B C and D uh, regarding case Z 2022 TAC 10, I recommend denial. Okay, we have a motion for denial. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of denial say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, unfortunately, uh, it's been recommended for denial. Um, we understand there's a need for housing and everything, but uh, it just doesn't seem to fit in that area according to the criteria so uh, we appreciate you coming in thank you for your time all right thank you yes. okay we're going to go ahead and just take a very brief uh five minute break please um it's 9 35 please come back to order at 9 40 promptly thank you
your heart. It makes your heart. It makes your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please find your way to your seats and come to order. All right, folks, please come to order. We're going to call the meeting back into session. I hereby call the rezoning meeting for August 2nd, 2022, back into session to go into our next case. Our next case is Z2022-11, Manfred Krause, the owner, 504 Decatur Avenue, 0.25 plus minus acres from medium density residential to high density residential. Members of the board, has there been any ex parte communication between you, the applicant, agents, attorneys, witnesses, planning board members, or anyone from the general public prior to the hearing? Please also disclose if you have visited the subject property or a relative or business associate to any of the parties. And Steve, good morning. No to all. No to all. No to all. No to all. Chairman, no to all. No to all and at all. All right, thank you. Staff, on this case, was notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Okay, and was it properly posted on the subject property? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Krause. Uh, okay, sir. Um, with your permission, we'd like for the staff to present the maps and the uh, photography for the case. Okay, he's indicated he's okay with that. We'll call you up in just a moment, sir. Okay, this is a Z2022-11 at 504 Decatur. This is the location and the wetlands map. This is the zoning map showing the current zoning of MDR. This is the future <coughs> land use map for mixed use urban. And this is the existing land use map showing the parcel and the uh, surrounding areas. This is a community redevelopment map showing that it is in the Warrington overlay. Can you talk a little bit closer to the mic? I'm, I'm old and hard of hearing. Okay. And I appreciate that. I forgot my hearing aids. Too. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the CRA map showing that it is in the Warrington overlay. And this is the Airfield Influence Planning District map showing that it is in the AIPD2 area. And this is just showing the platted subdivisions in the area of the subject parcel. This is the aerial map of the site. This is the public hearing sign posted on site. This is the subject property. This is looking at the subject property and the um, residents next door. This is looking across Decatur from the subject property. This is looking south along Decatur from the subject property. This is looking north along Decatur. And that's the maps and photography. Allison, would you go back to that map where you said it was the platted subdivisions? So is that entire area considered one platted subdivision? Is that considered Beach Haven subdivision? 
Actually, I believe it is. Um, yes. Okay. So that entire green area. Okay. So that was uh, probably subdivided along with the construction of the roads and everything back many it's a very old many years ago right yes, okay i just wanted to make sure that 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 was what we had okay all right thank you <clears throat> any questions about the maps or photography okay at this time uh we'd like to call forward mr manfred kraus and sir if you'll please be sworn in All righty, sir. Good morning. Good morning. If you would please state your full name and address for the record. Manfred Krause, 11425 Seaglade Drive. All righty, sir. Did you receive a copy of the rezoning hearing package and the staff's findings of fact? Yes. Okay. And do you understand that you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comp plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of that plan, and is not in conflict with the land development code? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Please speak into the mic. Yes, please. Is that any better? Um, a simple overlay before I go into the thing. It's uh, a lot next to my mom's house, and I'm wanting to put a duplex there. So I'll move forward from there. Uh, it's consistent with the flu category as part of the Land Development Code on Chapter 3. Uh, each and every line of its in uh, let's see is consistent with the flu uh, the findings from the county well, I'm not going to go into that um, asking for one step up in the density because it does not allow for duplexes the proposed building that I'm going to put there is a duplex but it's one building with two front doors basically so um, yes okay sir if you would maybe just try to talk directly into the end of the microphone sure. it picks up better there do we have any uh, headphones that we may offer the gentleman so he can hear better sir we're going to try to see if we have some headphones that may help pick up the sound a little better for you Go ahead, sir. Um, I realize that some folks may be worked up about the permitted uses, but the size of the lot does not permit anything other than it doesn't permit um, businesses or sorority houses or dormitories or manufactured homes or so on and so forth. So uh, that would never occur here. Um, no child care facilities, no none of that stuff. No marinas, no parks. Uh, criteria C, part of the LDC, is it's compatible with surrounding uses. Um, can we go back on the map to show the other duplexes in the area? The existing land use. Map. Yes, yes, please. I'm going to step over here. Yeah. Do we have a laser pointer or any kind of pointer? Okay. The, the staff member can move the mouse uh, if you'll direct them where you'd like it sure. to be pointed. If, if staff would go to the subject property course, it's the blue square. The blue square. Yes, sir. Sir, can you hear me now? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right, sir, go ahead. Surrounding the subject parcel that I'm trying to rezone to multifamily, you can see the multifamily homes that are in that 500 foot radius. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 duplexes within 500 feet. If you were to go out 1,000 feet, and I know it's not here, if you were to go out 1,000 feet, you would get to about 25 
duplexes in that area. So let me go back to single family within 500 feet. There would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 single family. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 12 multifamily, all within the 500 foot radius. So that's kind of where I'm going with this because of the numerous multifamilies in the area, housing situations, the size of the lot, permissible. My mom lives next door. It would be a perfect uh, duplex. Mr. Krause, I'd like to ask the staff to bring up the actual map that has the 500 foot radius. Do we have that one? Okay. And I know we don't go out a thousand feet, but if you went out a thousand feet, it would half half of everything on the map would be uh, multifamily duplexes. Right. Triplexes. Ahead, there are triplexes mixed in there with it too. Excuse me. Sure. Sir, we're going to ask you to wait until it's your turn to come up to the microphone and speak. Um, we're going to let the gentleman have due process and present his case, and then we'll give you opportunity to ask questions. Criteria D of the LDC. Um, is appropriate of spot zoning. Let me read this quickly. The spot zoning wouldn't affect, wouldn't be affected by this rezoning because of all the other duplexes and multifamilies in the area. It wouldn't affect the traffic. It wouldn't affect the water services. I've already contacted the um, state of Florida through the septic tank process, they absolutely will permit a duplex with the size of the tank and the drain field in that same area. They've already been out to check the area, so that's all I have. Okay, sir. Do you have any uh, witnesses that you wish to call at this time? No, sir. Okay. We'll go um, let the staff do their presentation. We'll give you an opportunity, of course, to come back up again in a few moments. Allison? Okay. <coughs> Allison Lindsay, Development Services. So they are requesting to go from medium density residential to high density residential. Consistent criteria A, consistent with C with the comp plan. The proposed amendment to HDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use as stated in FLU 1.3.1. The current future land use allows residential and non-residential uses while promoting compatible infill development. The parcel will be using the existing roads and the existing infrastructure. Criteria B, consistent with the Land Development Code. The proposed amendment could be consi consistent with the intent and purpose of the Land Development Code, although the community redevelopment is in um, this is in the, the Warrington overlay, and the uh, community redevelopment has reviewed and uh, the request and has submitted a letter in opposition to this up, up zoning, and it's included in the packet. The um, parcel is a point twenty four plus or minus acres. The existing zoning of the parcel is MDR, which allows for a limited range of uses and intensities that are also included in the requested zoning district of HDR. However, the HDR also allows two-family and multifamily developments. Now, the, the prior zoning of this was R1, and as the code states that in the current MDR, if they were previously zoned R3 or V4, <clears throat> um, then they could have the two family dwellings. So therefore, I think because he wasn't R3, he was R1, that's where he came for the rezoning to HDR. Allison, I don't mean to interrupt, but just a quick question. Um, the gentleman pointed out there's quite a few around there. Are those 
legal non-conforming uses at this point, uh, the other duplexes that are in the area? Is that what they are? Yes, sir, because the, like I said, prior zoning was R1, which did not allow it. It was strictly single family. And then the MDR, the multifamily, it, they are non-conforming, legal non-conforming uses. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the um, the HDR allows 18 dwelling units per acre, whereas the MDR allows 10 dwelling units per acre. So criteria C, compatible with surrounding uses. The proposed amendment um, is consistent with the surrounding uses as they are residential in nature um, within the 500 foot there was identified properties that were zoned MDR and HDMU. The proposed development uh, would be consistent with similar um, uses as residential and the intensities would, it would be higher in density um, from the 10 to the 18. The existing uses and intensities on the ground, they are similar and compatible because they are residential with the allowed and existing uses under the HDR. The criteria D, appropriate of spot zoning, it was determined that the HDR would be consistent with the definition of spot zoning. However, the request to rezone from MDR to HDR would make the parcel um, more compatible with the uh, adjacent zoning and the existing uses would, be, would not reinforce the spot zoning. The adjacent properties are zoned HDR. However, the surrounding properties are already developed with a mix of single family and multifamily. Uh, Allison, is that a is that correct? The adjacent properties are zoned HDR. It looks like everything. No, MDR. you're right. It, I, I meant to say LDR. Thank you for catching that. I'll correct that. Yeah. I'm sorry, MDR. Thank you. I apologize. MDR. I'll get it right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry that so, that since we're on that paragraph. Going to HDR would make it equally compatible to the adjacent zoning? Yeah, as soon as I was reading that, I was kind of confused myself. So I, I believe I um, need to re put another, uh, reword that. <laughs> it would make it equally, it would make it compatible with the uses. With the residential uses. Okay, residential uses. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for the official findings, uh, let me just be clear. The staff's going to adjust this paragraph for the official findings. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, do we have to do anything with Mr. Krause since we're amending the findings from staff? Uh, uh, no, just once we get to the end of this, you could take another vote to um, adopt the staff's amended findings into the record. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's just make sure... Um, Sir, do you understand exactly? Okay, good. He's giving me a thumbs up indicating he understands why we're we're changing that. So, all right, go ahead, Allison. Sorry to keep interrupting. Oh, no, that's fine. Thank you for catching all that. It's just, I want to ask real quick, just since you <laughs> hit it, you, we have to discuss density. That's the only reason we're here, correct? I mean, he can't put this on the current zoning if you were to put two. Thank you. So that's the whole crux of the matter. All right. <clears throat> go ahead, Allison. So criteria E is appropriate with change or change conditions. The land uses or the development conditions within the area surrounding the properties have not changed. The development within the area has remained low density residential and with the request to HDR, the potential uses, densities and intensities allowed, they would be compatible with the existing surrounding residential development in the area and it would not create urban sprawl. That's the end of staff's findings. Okay, so just so I'm sure, we're saying on Criterion 2 it may be compatible, but you're asking for the board, or partially consistent, so you're asking for the board to qualify that? Is that... Well, and also that was the CRA. Um, they were here to, to. Uh, they're actually here today. 
Um, so it would be consistent with the uses and the resi as residential. Here again, the densities would increase, but the C it's in the warrant and overlay, and the warrant and overlay is in opposition. I don't know that we've ever seen partially consistent. It's usually either consistent yeah, we or like, not yeah. consistent. Right. We would like for the uh, the, uh, the CIA person to come. I mean, there's no such thing as partially consistent because of if this was for the China because of the use is already there and the surrounding use. So we'll, so these are the cases we're going to need your expertise to help make make the decision because CIA, if you can come and make his comments about that, they can explain why they are in opposition if we can. Okay. Allison, again, sorry for all the interruptions. Are you done with your presentation so we yes. can have CRA? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, please come forward. And I don't think you were here when the staff were sworn in, were you? I was. Okay. I was. And did you affirm that? Yes, I okay. do. Thank you, sir. And your name and position for the record, please. Max Rogers, Scambia County Community Redevelopment Agency. I'm a development program manager uh, assigned to the Warrington District. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I understand that the... Uh, CRA has written a letter of opposition. Could you explain to us what the basis of the opposition is? Uh, well, to zoom out a little bit, our, our perspective and our purview is the, looking uh, to enforce the, the, rezone, <laughs> the Warrington Redevelopment uh, Plan of 2010, the latest update. Um, so that's our guidance. And as I noted in the letter, uh, we do support infill housing, so that is something that the, we're, we're interested in, the redevelopment of the area. So we are not opposed to infill housing, and we do support it. However, um, it does appear that this uh, rez the rezoning request is, to, um, is incongru incongruent with what the surrounding zoning is. So they could do infill housing uh, without rezoning, that up, up zoning the property um, does not appear to be uh, similar to the zoning around it, uh, particularly south of Heinrich is all MDR, whereas north it starts to become uh, HDMU as it gets closer to Gulf Beach Highway. Uh, the neighborhood of <coughs> Beach Haven north, north of Gulf Beach Highway, has much more HDMU, particularly west of Decatur Avenue. Um, those areas have a lot more um, duplexes. So just to be clear and i think mr pyle stated the pretty obvious this is about density the cra would support a single family residential use just not a duplex correct whatever's allowed in the existing zoning would be appropriate okay all right very good questions all right uh mr kraus did you have any questions of this gentleman <clears throat> Uh, sorry, we'll have to have you come to the microphone. Sorry, we're recording everything. Um, please explain to me infill housing. Sure. Infill housing is a planning term uh, that means developing things, uh, whether that's commercial or residential, where existing utilities um, and infrastructure are, lo are located, so roads, um, where, where it wouldn't, the redevelopment of the area of infill would require less utilities and infrastructure investment as opposed to what would be considered greenfield development, uh, you know, far out in the in the country where they'd have to bring sewer lines, power lines, uh, upgrade roads, uh, all the necessary infrastructure improvements. Okay. Yes. One more question. So what you're saying, nothing has to change. No new power lines, no new roads, no new water services, no new sewer services. Nothing's going to change if this is allowed in. No, I would disagree with that. All I'm saying is that this would be considered infill housing where infrastructure is more readily available. So the details of what would have to be added to make this development happen. Um, you know, obviously all new development requires some some improvements, some infrastructure. You'd actually actually have to run a sewer line when it becomes available, those kind of things. Um, but yes, this would be considered infill development. Okay. Additional questions, Mr. Krause? Just a response to that. Um, like I said earlier, I've contacted People's Water. They have no problem putting two water meters there. I've already got my permit from the state of Florida for a septic tank for uh, multifamily. <clears throat> 
there's adequate power. I've checked with Gulf Power. And where the septic tank's going to go is towards the front of the lot on the south side, which hopefully, when sewer comes in, will just be abandoning the tank and moving straight into sewer. Just as, just as a response to his statement. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Uh, I wouldn't disagree that this is infill development, as he's describing, um, just that the, um, you could do infill development with the current zone. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S. First name's Max, M-A-X. Okay. Thank you. Allison, did you have other witnesses or any additional information you wanted to give to the board? Okay. Questions of Allison from the board? Mr. Krause, did you have any questions about the findings of facts that, as they were presented at this time? No, sir. Okay. We're going to move into public comment on the case. Mr. Again, Chair, I'm uh, sorry. Now would be an appropriate time for that uh, motion to accept the staff's amended findings into the record. Okay. Do we know exactly how they will be amended at this point? <laughs> did, you, did you read them? Because <laughs> I, I think we have changed partially to not consistent or ex <laughs> so it is not consistent. Okay, so we have that and we have uh, paragraph four changes as well so are you ready to present that Allison so basically um, so that's criteria C correct with uh, the surrounding D I think it is where it says equal I'm sorry D yes yeah. okay so um, it was determined that the proposed HDR zoning would be considered spot zoning based on the definition however the request to rezone from MDR to HDR would make the parcel compatible with the residential uses in the area and would not reinforce spot zoning as defined in the LDC. Okay, that's the new language. And then in Criterion B. Yes, uh, that next sentence down to the, I can't quite hear you, sir. Come on, I didn't yeah. address. Oh. All right, this is just Scribner's correction. We'll, we'll hear what you, did you get what he was saying? For us or Allison? I didn't hear. Sir, if you'll come over and just speak to them directly, I don't think we have to put it on the record. Logan Patterson, I was just going to speak to the HDR there is an MDR, and that was a. Right, so the next discussion. sentence after the defined by the LDC is the adjacent properties are zoned MDR. Okay. So, do you get that one, Dave? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now, back to criterion. B, it's not partial consistent. It's you're saying it's not consistent at this point. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can word this correctly. Um, the proposed amendments to HDR is not consistent due to the fact that of the density requirement that is associated with MDR. However, there are other factors such as. The surrounding uses, the existing surrounding uses that the planning board could consider in the consideration of. But it is not considered due to the density requirements. So there's no such thing as partially consistent. Right. And again, when you're giving the findings, you're giving black and white yes. according to the code. Yes. And then if the board wishes to find a different way the board members can do so. Yes. Okay. It's the existing good. surrounding uses is a is a factor that the board can consider. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we amend the package as noted and read into the record. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. So that will be an amended uh, findings of fact for the case and. I believe our court reporter indicates that he's gotten those and of course we've recorded it as well so we can go back for reference at this time we will go into the public comment portion and for those members of the public who are going to speak please note that the planning board only bases its decisions on the approval conditions and exceptions and if we could bring those uh, again up on the screen during our deliberations we don't consider general statements of support or opposition Please limit your testimony to those approval conditions uh, and exceptions. 
Also note that only those individuals who are here today and give testimony on the record will be allowed to speak at the subsequent uh, Board of County Commission. Um, all right, let me see. Okay, we're going to go directly into public comment. The first uh, speaker is Marty Stanovich. Good morning, sir. If you please state your name and address for the record. Be sworn in. Uh, Marty Stanovich, 2020 Bio Grande Boulevard. Okay. I do. All right, sir, your comments, please. Thank Good you, morning. Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Marty Stanovich. I'm a 35 year resident of Beach Haven, and I own three properties in the principal arterial zone. My primary residence of 2020 Bio Grande Boulevard my prior resident res, residence of 405 Decatur Avenue and uh, my adjacent property 2010 by Grundy Boulevard and I've also been asked uh, by my next-door neighbor Miss um, Marion E black of uh, 2017 Grundy Street which is two houses down from the proposed development I am three houses down in my primary residence uh, to speak in opposition Okay, Mr. Stanovich, just uh, for the record, since we are in quasi-judicial, only those who are actually here today Understood. presenting will go on the record, um, and she would have to be here to speak. So, uh, yes, yes, she's sir. elderly with a heart condition. But yes, sir. Certainly Understand. understood. Thank you. All right. Um, under the approval conditions, uh, I'd like to speak that all items A through A are A through E are not compatible or appropriate. Um, I have looked through. It is not logical. It is not consistent with the development pattern, and I would ask that the board take the um, opposition of the Warrington overlay that Mr. Rogers spoke to, uh, the opposition that has been noted by uh, Mr. Jones, and uh, is out of context. It is not congruent, and as a resident who plans on retiring to this neighborhood and spending out the rest of my days there, I would ask that you vote in opposition. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker is Michael Mancushi. Sorry, the handwriting, I, I was trying to decipher a little, so got it close. Yes, sir, please be sworn in and state your name and address. My name is Mike Majeski or Michael Majeski. I live at 2004 Bayou Grande Boulevard. Uh, Next to Marty Stanovich. Okay. I do. All right, sir. Please well, proceed. Uh, I've been a resident of the uh, of the Bay Grande area, uh, specifically the Beach Haven area, for 53 years. I've lived my entire life there. My family owns eight or ten lots up and down the Bayou. I currently have an uncle that would speak in opposition this morning except he's at home with Vibrio, okay? Uh, he got it about three weeks ago and we're lucky to still have him alive. In living here, in living in, in this area, I've, I love Beach Haven, okay? It's a place that my kids grew up it's, and it's a place that I wanna retire <clears throat> and hopefully live the rest of my days there. It is a beautiful area, but with that, there's been problems with these duplexes and the quality of the people, the drugs, the crackheads that walk up and down the street. My wife likes to walk every afternoon. She leaves our house. She fears for her life. She has to get in the car and drive up to Navy Point to park at my son's house to go walking because she fears of the crackheads, the drug dealing, and everything else that goes on with these duplexes. These are not high-end duplexes that go in, okay? My fear is that when you put these duplexes after duplexes after duplexes after duplexes, okay, in a residential neighborhood where it should be single-family dwellings, all right? I live on the bayou, okay? I've built a nice house on the bayou. I've spent a fortune building that. And my property value, every time they build these, crack houses because that's what they are all right goes down in value 
is not consistent with the neighborhood that is currently there. Yes, there's rental houses there. They've been there for a long time. I promise you, you wouldn't want either one of these built next to your houses. Okay? Change is coming to the Navy Point area, and I welcome it. It's a great thing because when NARF left, we were given the lies by the Navy that, hey, we're bringing in all this new business. We're building this school. We got tattoo parlors. We got kids with no money walking up and down the street, whether they're a great military or not. You took single family homes that had great jobs and they moved them to Cherry Point, North Carolina and Corpus Christi, Texas, and they left Navy Point empty. And all we've seen is crap for the last 20 years that I've seen move into these great neighborhoods that I grew up in, I trick or treated in. And now it's coming back because East Hills built out and all these other areas are built up to where they're not affordable for the average person. It's ridiculous. And now they're going to put these homes here or these dwellings here, these duplexes here. They're not high end duplexes. It's not Argonne Court. It's low income families and it's just going to get lower and lower and lower. All you got to do is drive across the street and take a look at the other side of Gulf Beach Highway. Would you ask yourself, would you want your family, would you build your house there? Sir, the we'll answer is absolutely not. Sir, we'll ask you to wrap your comments up, please. Your time has expired. Thank you for listening. Appreciate Thank you, it. sir. Stafford Pulford. Yes, my name is Stafford Pulford. I live at 405. Bartow Avenue, and I also have lived in uh, Beach Haven for 50 years. Yes. <clears throat> Thanks, sir. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, I have not only lived in the area, I have also worked in the area. I've, I'm a retired uh, health department employee uh, of 35 years, and i um, I have questions uh, to this particular piece of property. There aren't as many duplexes. For one thing, there aren't as many duplexes as this gentleman says are around there. And the ones that are around there are on larger lots. And I, I, there's no indication on what size this lot exactly is. I went out there and walked it out. I, I figured it was 75 by 150 feet, but that's... This is the approximation here. Um, he also said that uh, he had approval from the uh, Escambia County Health Department. I had a septic tank approval. I, I have not seen any. Do you have any paperwork with you, sir? Sir, uh, sir, I'm going to just ask you, just address your comments to the board. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're fine. Okay, I'm just, you know. <laughs> Um, anyway, back back to uh, the, the septic tank situation. It takes uh, 3,000 square feet uh, for a septic tank drain field to be installed just for a uh, one three-bedroom house, and you need 4,000 square feet for a for duplex, what he's talking about. And he hasn't got the room there. Um, I don't see any proof of the property that has been uh, officially surveyed. I see some uh, orange stripes here and there. Uh, I, I just don't think that uh, everything is up to code. It's being done by code. And that, that is my concern. That's my main concern. And my, my also concern is, you know, it is a single family dwelling neighborhood. And I also feel that uh, it is going to impede on, on the value of our homes. And um, our quality of life and uh, 
our property values. So, anyway, I just, I do not believe it's a good move. I do not believe it's good for our neighborhood. And uh, and these gentlemen talked before me about, you know, going to retire there. Uh, I am retired, and uh, I, I don't appreciate the, you know, the, uh, what's trying to happen here. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, sir. David Horacek, Horacek, hope I didn't murder it too bad. Okay. <laughs> 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 Sir, if you'll be sworn in and then state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. All right, your name and address, please. Uh, David Horacek, address 2001 Heinrich Street. All right, go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm here simply because I don't believe that uh, changing the zoning to HDR is appropriate for that neighborhood. And uh, it, it's MDR now. I personally have nothing against duplexes or anything. I think they're good starter homes for you know young families to invest in. But uh, I just don't like the rezoning. There's plenty of HDR north of Heinrich, and uh, looking forward to it being developed because everybody's for property values going up. <laughs> so, that's about it. I, I am bothered by one thing. And I, I'm not a math major. It's MDR now, which allows 10 DUs per acre for dwelling units. And the property is 0.25, roughly. Sir, I, I'm not a witness. Oh, um, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just want some clarification. The, the gentleman is, is the board attorney. Um, either Horace or Allison uh, would represent the staff. So, My question is, what's preventing? If it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a quarter of an acre, and it's already MD, uh, MDR, which allows 10 DUs per acre, that leaves 2.5 DUs. Uh, why couldn't it be a duplex without rezoning? Because the MDR only allows one house per lot. Right. So you're counting a duplex as two houses? Yes. It's two dwellings. Two dwelling units. Two dwelling units. One building, but two separate oh, houses. per lot. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that clarifies that. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate Thank your comments. Walter Lurton. Morning, sir. Walter Lurton. I live at 427 Paulding Avenue, which is about two blocks from the location at 504 Decatur. My concern is that Escambia County has gone through a tremendous effort to try to work with the Navy so that we have a low density housing project or a lower density housing project. If we open the door to high density housing in this neighborhood, this is gonna turn out to be one of those neighborhoods that should have never been there to begin with, but it got in before we had a comprehensive plan. Uh, I don't know exactly what the APZ zone is. I have a suspicion that it's something because we're right in the middle of the turn coming out of the, out of the east-west runway going back into the north-south runway. You can answer that one for me. Mr. Chairman, may I address? Uh, yes, please. It is a, it's about 1,100 feet from the APZ, so it's an AIPD2, uh, okay. which is not an accident potential zone, um, but it, it, it is, as you said, it is close to a, a turn um, and that is uh, a APZ-1. Now, if it was an APZ-1, we would be talking about something different. Okay. Um, are you are aware of the fact that anybody who has bought property in this neighborhood since about 2005 has to sign a statement of closing that says they know that airport is there? Yes, that's a, yes, a real estate disclosure. Okay, well, that, my, my fear, once again, is that if we open the door to high-density residential, then when the next person and the next person comes along, how do we tell them no? And at what point do we finally get pushback from the Navy? And that's my point of view. 
Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. <coughs> Logan Patterson. Um, Logan Patterson, I'm at 504 Decatur Avenue. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Well. Please be sworn in. That's what I do for him. So. Um, I'm just here to, can, to argue against the motion for moving this from MDR to HDR. Um, as established, all the surrounding properties are MDR. Um, and if we go to, I don't want to take too much time, but if we go to page 46 of your 104 page document, where it should. Yep, yeah. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. If y'all could, if you go to page 46 of your 104 page document, I just want to show some other HD, uh, HDR units in that area. Um, and as you're doing that, I will say that I do not believe that this is consistent with the comprehensive plan as much more better stated by um, Mr. Williams. Mr. Roger, Roger, Mr. Rogers, um, this could be, there could be something done to this property, which is consistent with the zoning that it already has and is consistent with the neighborhood. Um, uh, duplexes are not, they're not bad, but if we go to, once that picture comes up, um, any other HDR in this area is, a, is on a contiguous And when we get there, it'll be a little more prevalent. Uh, the point I was trying to make is any other HDR that is in this area is on a contiguous block of land, which is more than 1.2 acres in size, and they're within 200 yards of the road. Uh, this would be really an isolated bubble inside of, of single family homes. And there are two duplexes on that street, um, which are on a quarter acre lot as well. But as established here, they're grandfathered in from and before the zoning. Um, which could hark on to a point made by the previous uh, citizen here, Walter, with where, where does that stop with? Now we have a small 0.25 acre here unit, which has been MDR to HDR. 10 years from now, you know, how do you stop that process from further happening in the neighborhood? I, I think this is a great way to, or a great point to, to stop it here, particularly everything south of Heinrich um, being, being single family homes in an, unchanging MDR zoning area um, if and I don't think uh, I don't know if the spot zoning here is actually even really applicable for something this is this is not an area which is in transition or really moving around there are no businesses that are really developing new new businesses developing off of Gulf Beach right there there are no businesses developing back into the neighborhood um, the pool in Navy Point is a single-family home community for retirees and citizens of the state. Um, so, uh, with those comments, I, I don't think that is in, uh, it is congruent with the current development that we have. And although the map uh, isn't here, uh, the HDR all in that area as defined are, the findings of the staff said that there were HDR within 500 feet or 500 yards uh, here. And if we can see, if we can see at the top left, very top center and top left, um, that one in the top center particularly, that's the one I'm speaking to, that's, that's more than an acre contiguous undeveloped land right now within 150, 200 yards of Gulf Beach Highway. Um, there's nothing else out there remotely this small that's HDR and isolated or less than, or more than 250 feet away from uh, Gulf Beach Highway. Thank you, sir. Alice Blackwell. Morning, ma'am. If you'll be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. I do. Thank you. <laughs> I wrote it down because I'm nervous. That's all right. Okay. Um, I'm not here, absolutely not, to try to prevent Mr. Krause from improving on his property. I respect his right to do so, but I strongly believe that he should do it with respect for the rights of the other property owners um, in our neighborhood. And within the parameters of the existing zoning designation. Zoning laws exist to protect the rights of all the property owners in our area and should not be changed to benefit one individual without very good reason. 
zoning laws are intended to conserve existing neighborhoods and protect property values. As it was said early, or right now, Warrington is experiencing a period of rapid growth and revitalization. And I believe we need to be very careful not to allow our desire for profit dictate the direction that growth takes. <clears throat> in my neighborhood in the past two years, <clears throat> I've seen new homes being built after a very long period of decline. I've seen homes being bought and refurbished by families who are invested in this community. And this is exactly what we need more of. Homeowners who are invested in the neighborhood, not investors who are interested only in making a profit. There's absolutely a place for that type of investor-based growth and improvement, but it's not in the middle of a long-established residential neighborhood. There are still many vacant properties in the immediate vicinity of the property in question, and my fear is that if this zoning is allowed, it will create a precedent that is unhealthy for our neighborhood and detrimental to the values of the surrounding homes. My knowledge of Florida Land Use Code and its comprehensive plan is very limited. However, I know what's been stated before that my neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods are zoned medium density residential. And I assume that a great deal of thought went into the decision to give it that particular zoning designation and there were valid and important reasons for doing so, which probably included its close proximity to Naval Air Station, Bayou Grande, and the Jones Swamp wetlands preserve. It seems to me that the rezoning of this property is neither required nor consistent with the proposed Florida land use plan. Ours is primarily a neighborhood of modest single family homes. High density zones are typically urban areas with buildings that have multiple units. This rezoning is not compatible with the area and if improved could impact future use of the undeveloped land in our neighborhood. In summary, I believe that this rezoning is not in the best interest of the neighborhood and would serve to benefit one individual to the detriment of other property owners. I believe that if rezoning is allowed, it would establish a precedent for future investors to attempt to do the same, and very quickly the climate of our neighborhood would move towards investor as opposed to resident owner. Thank you. I think you timed that perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very well written. We appreciate it. All right. Here's another one. I'm probably going to murder here, but it looks like. Look at that. See, that's why. He, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Kelly Majeski. Good morning. <laughs> Only thanks to Tim. <laughs> it's, uh, Kelly Majeski, 2004, by Grandi Boulevard. I do. All right. Go ahead, please. Um, I really wasn't prepared to give a speech up here, so I'm a little bit shaky on this. Uh, my husband got up earlier and spoke about um, my my thoughts of the neighborhood. I'm excited about Navy Point. Navy Point is growing and the beautiful homes that are going in there and the restructure of those homes. My concern to me is on our side of the Navy Point area, we're trying to make that move towards those nicer homes and everything. I'm not saying that a duplex is not nice, but I do, I am concerned about the quality and that small of a lot, the quality of people that would be going into that. As my husband said before, I drive to Navy Point because I'm afraid to walk down the road. It's just, it's a little sketchy. I mean, we have trash that is dumped daily on Decatur Avenue. So, anyways, that's my opposition. All right. But thank you. Thank you. Leslie Himes. Morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Leslie Himes. I live at 2000 Grundy Street. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't oppose of the gentleman building something there as long as it is not going to be something that's going to be a, a week rental or, you know, a, a month rental. I, because it's going to bring nothing but 
downgrading our neighborhood. Um, I want something, if he's going to build something, something nice, maybe small, single family, but have a stable rental if it's going to be a rental unit, something that's going to stay, someone that's going to stay there a year, two years, maybe even five or six or ten. Um, but that's the type of community we have. Those are the people that we want. Um, so I don't approve, I guess, of what he's trying to establish. So thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Vicki Carson. Good morning. We'll have you sworn in and state your name and address. I do. Um, I'm Vicki Carson. I live at Four White Bartow, which is about a block from the property uh, that we're speaking of. Um, I own the adjacent lot on uh, Bartow that backs up to uh, the lot that we're speaking with, with uh, Mr. Kraus. And uh, I support my neighbors. This is, this is Beach Haven. We've come out today because we believe in our neighborhood. We believe in its current growth after Ivan destroyed us. And we're now building back. And when people are moving in, they're improving smaller homes. They're building new larger homes. There are two duplexes on Decatur. They were built in the 70s. Evidently, they've been grandfathered in. There are two duplexes on Bartow. Uh, that are older duplexes, uh, but it is a community of people that support each other, and it's a very positive direction that we are going. And I believe with the vacant lots available, this will open up a negative effect for our neighborhood, for multiple family dwellings, and it's just not the direction that we want to go. So I've lived there 40 plus years. I'm now retired, and it's just a great place to live, and I personally don't want it to change. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You. Holmes Walters. I do. Holmes Walters. Uh, we live, my, my family and I live at 2015 Grundy Street. Uh, we uh, stand with the community. Uh, at our house in opposition of this based on uh, the findings of your staff as well as uh, uh, Mr. Jones that spoke for the community re redevelopment. It doesn't meet the criteria that is outlined in certain parts uh, and uh, not only that, it, uh, I believe uh, based on uh, the young man that this property that, that is in question is attached to, as Mr. Krause said, his mother's property. It's an empty lot that is uh, attached to this uh, to this house. He had a previous renter that was in that home, and he stated that he wanted to put two sheds on the property and turn them into little tiny houses. One of the big reasons why we are against this is because of, he's saying a duplex, but of his own words to somebody else, doesn't appear as, as though he's being honest. Not only does it, the staff find that it doesn't meet uh, the, the requirements, he, I believe, is not being honest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jenny Walters. Jenny Walters. Morning. Oh, okay, Jenny Walters. I do. Good morning. Really prepare a speech or anything? So um, come just a little closer to the microphone. Okay, sorry. Um, I stand with my neighbors. We've lived there for about 16 years, and it's mainly single-family homes. And um, like they said, people are revitalizing it. They're moving into these older homes, fixing them up, and it's a great community. And I don't want to leave. What I don't want to happen is, not that I'm against duplexes, but sometimes it brings in, you know, lower income. And, and you know, I don't like walking in the neighborhood by myself. I just feel like it's just gonna, it's not gonna be good for the neighborhood. Um, so I'm opposed to the, the change. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and last, certainly not least, Larry Downs Jr. You gotta get your, 
pink slip in earlier. See, if you give it to me last, you get at the bottom of the pile. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, how y'all like this hat? Love it. Kind of, kind of represents a little bit of freedom, huh? Over the last three years. Yep, we got our we got our governor back in the right position. <laughs> He's liking that freedom a little more than that governor big hammer. Keep your boots 50 feet apart, that kind of dumb stuff. But anyways, uh, I don't know this guy. I haven't talked to him other than he just told me that he had a permit for a septic system, which is very common. You don't need 3,000 feet for a septic system for a, uh, for a duplex. I've done tons of them. 500 square feet does it just fine. But here's the thing. I've heard everything up here. Man, I wrote down so many notes here. You know, crackheads, uh, low income, you know, let's throw trailer houses in there too, you know, duplexes, you know. I mean, there's nothing stopping anybody from building a, you know, a duplex size or a larger house on there and just renting out the rooms to a bunch of crackheads. There's nothing. You know, I mean, that's, that's, you know, Avondale turned into a, a you know, a crap hole, Montclair. Same thing, those are really nice neighborhoods. Unfortunately, the problem isn't the area or the freedom to be able to build what you want to build. That's not the problem. The problem is, is our government restricting prosperity, rewarding failure over and over again, uh, creating, giving, giving more reasons for failed parents. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, they bring up reasons not to allow uh, you know, a, a house, a house or a duplex. So these are the reasons. I mean, think about this. What was it zoned previously? I think it was Before the MDR? Mm -hmm. R1. R1? Which was single family. And then what was it zoned before that? Was it, was it a free, was it a freedom zone? Was it just a freedom zone? Holy moly. All right, let's move on. <laughs> before that. <laughs> You know, what was this whole country zoned before 1792 uh, and then 1776? What was it zoned? Great Britain? <laughs> All right, anyways, everything's about safety and protection. We got to have y'all protect us. We've heard Mr. Horace Jones protect, protect. I don't need it. You know, I think... Uh, I don't think there's no difference between a single family residence or a duplex. No different. You can put 20, 30 people in one home or in a duplex. What difference does it make? Let's get some housing on the market. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Okay, that's uh, all of the speaker request forms that I had for this case. Are there uh, anyone who has not spoken yet that would like to speak on this case? All right, hearing none, we will hereby close the public uh, comment portion of the meeting. Mr. Krause will give you an opportunity to come back up and give a closing statement or answer any questions or ask the staff questions, anything you'd like to do at this time. Thank you. I have no staff questions. Um, using a little bit of common sense, my mom's house is next door. We're trying to improve the neighborhood. Um, we don't build low end, we don't build sheds, we don't build shacks, we don't make up stories. Uh, we do things the right way, we've always done things the right way, and that's why we're here doing what we're doing right now. Um, like I've said, I've contacted utility companies, water companies, the whole works, everybody's good with it. Um, had no feedback from any of, any, any of the neighbors until now. <clears throat> but we're, we're, we're there to improve the neighborhood. We're there to make a better neighborhood. We're not there to be an investor and build something and hightail it out of there and rent it out or whatever else. So take that into consideration, please. We're, my mom lives next door. I mean, wow. So, right, so I mean, she owns, she owns, excuse me, she please. owns the house next door. Sorry. No, you're, you're fine. Please, no shouting from the gallery, please. Um, Mr. Krause, um, I'd like to 
give you the opportunity, since the staff amended the findings during the hearing, do you have anything that you'd like to address on those findings that were formally amended? Just to make sure that you have an opportunity uh, because that was not was given not given to you before the case. So since it's changed, give you that opportunity. No, sir. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, Horace, did you have something? And again, and I do want to state the obvious um, that again, we have to look at, we have to look at the potential uses. HDR, the potential uses for medium density residential, basically single family. With HDR, you can allow, with HDR, you can allow for more intense uses, such as apartments, duplexes, quads, and with the density as well. So, so again, there could be a proliferation. We just factors of one can domino is push. It can cause a proliferation of, as Allison stated in our findings of HDR. So we do want to look at again not just what's there, but the potential what he's building, but the the proliferation of HDR zoning that could impact the existing community. Yes. There could be some duplexes that are already grandfathered in, but that's why staff had to state the obvious that HDR could have an impact on the existing communities. Thank you, Horace. Board members, any questions of any of the parties? Chair will entertain a motion. I move to deny Z-2022-11. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion to deny is unanimous. Um, you do have a chance to state your case in front of the Board of County Commissioners. For those of you that spoke today, you may also speak in front of the commissioners. The commissioners do have the opportunity to reject or accept the recommended order from the planning board. So just keep that in mind. Just because we recommend approval, they have the final say in the case. So if you wish to be heard again, the gentleman has an opportunity to appeal to the Board of County Commissioners uh, when he presents his case. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, please be quiet as you exit. We're going to go directly into our next case. Our next case is Z2022-12. It's being presented by uh, Buddy Page, who is the agent for Muhammad Hope, the owner. And it is 1.5 plus minus acres from HCLI, heavy commercial light industrial, to HDR, high density residential district. At this time, we'll ask members of the board, has there been any ex parte communication between you, the agents, attorneys, witnesses, planning board members, or general public? Have you visited the subject property, and are you uh, a relative or business associate of any of the parties? Steve? No to all. Thank you. No to all. No to all. Chairman, no to all. No to all. And no to all. Please note, Mr. Pyle has stepped out of the room. When he comes back in, I will ask him uh, of his ex parte communication if he's had any. At this time, if there is no objection, Mr. Page will have the staff present the maps and photography. He's indicated he's okay with it. So, good morning. Thank you. John Fisher, Scammy County Development Services, Senior Planner. All right, so this is the location and wetlands map. Uh, there are no wetlands uh, currently by our GIS system on this property. Um, this is showing off a 297A in the location of close to less than a quarter of a mile from Pine Forest and Nine Mile Road, a major node, commercial node in the area. Um, this is showing a little more of the zoning map. Uh, you can see it's a very mixed within a surrounding area, 500 to even um, 2,500 feet. Um, we have the property zone LDR and the adjacent property zone LDR. Um, as, as you spread out, you get to the higher densities. Um, this is the future land use map. Uh, the future land use is mixed use suburban and with mixed use urban across the street. 
This is showing the existing land use map. Um, this is where it's kind of funny. Um, we had the zoning on the south side of HCLI with single family houses. Um, and the north side um, is zoned LDR, which fits the um, single family houses as they should be. Um, this is just a platted subdivision map. This is what's been platted in the area. As you can see, um, everything from that parcel and within the 500 feet pretty much is they are not platted. These homes have been there a while and before zoning. So this is where this um, can get kind of confusing a little bit sometimes. You just see how the trend was. This was not a platted subdivision. All these lots that are zoned, all these houses that are in ACLI um, zoning districts have, were there kind of before zoning. This is showing the aerial map. Um, this property did have a home on it at one time. Um, no longer, it's no longer there. This is the public hearing sign. This is looking west, northwest on 297A. Uh, looking north onto the subject property. You can see it's vacant now. Uh, this is looking east along 297A. If you look down the road there, you can see the Publix on um, Pine Forest Road. And this is looking south. This is the part where it's zoned 8 CLI on the south side and you have single family homes. That includes uh, staff's pictures. John, just a quick question. Go back to that picture that faces south, and you may get into this when you do your findings, but, um, and I think it's appropriately zoned across the street, but either that one or the next one, uh, there's a, a business there that has a lot of vehicles that come in and out. I'm not sure what kind of business. I, I travel this road quite a bit, so I just am familiar with that area. Um, when we get to your to your side. official findings, maybe you can address just what is those businesses across the street and so, everything. So most, um, and if you don't mind, um, the south side is zone ACLI, which allows for single family dwellings if they're a lot of record, um, and which is a heavy commercial light industrial zoning. So okay, they so those it, businesses would be appropriate if they're in place there already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you, John. And, and, and we'll address it because when I looked at, I looked at that too. I want to go back to the original zoning, and the originals it was zoned commercial. that commercial. So those been they were already there. So it's not no rezoning came along to add okay. those things. It was already there before we changed the name. Right. The zoning was already in place as correct as John stated. Okay. Very good. I just when. I saw the picture, it caught my attention, so, okay. All right, very good. Uh, any questions on the maps or photography before we go on to the applicant? All right, Mr. Page, if you'll come forward, sir, be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Buddy Page, 5337 Hamilton Lane at Pace. Thank you, sir. And before you get started, uh, Mr. Pyle was out of the room when we asked for any ex parte communication relationships with any of the partners or if you have visited the subject property. No 12. I know where it is. All right. Thank you. Mr. Page, did you receive a copy of the staff's uh, rezoning package and findings of fact? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you understand that you have the bur burden of providing substantial competent evidence that it's consistent with the comprehensive plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of that plan, and is not in conflict with the Land Development Code. I do. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is asking for a change um, from LDR to high-density residential on a site that currently has HCLI. If we could put the zoning map back up, it might, it might help. He currently has a small frontage of uh, HCLI that doesn't uh, that doesn't show it. So okay, the so border the the yeah. blue is probably thicker. Yes. Um, so it's it's just a little triangle piece as you extend yes. this purple line out. It actually does go on there. So there is HCLI on the property, just very limited. So it's it's a split parcel with the right. Okay, correct. Right. right, very good. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chairman, the applicant, uh, the owner of the property, rather, uh, intends to build between 15 and 20 uh, apartment units on the site uh, and give up the HCLI frontage uh, so that it's all then 
uh, high density uh, residential. Some of the characteristics in that area are interesting. Uh, you will notice uh, right where the blue area is uh, depicted on that map, if you go to the next, very next parcel to the north, right there, just south of the MDR and south of uh, all of the residential areas, that is a former bar pit and it's about 16 to 18 feet deep right at the westerly end. Uh, there were a couple of people that indicated they thought way back in the 60s or so it was a DOT pit, but it's privately owned now. My point being, uh, it's not likely that that project or that particular piece of property would ever be uh, developed. Uh, I understand that it does receive some uh, uh, pop-off from the subdivision that's just north of that. Uh, so the, uh, the percolation at that particular site is something that's being used as such today. Mr. Chairman, the findings of the staff under the uh, approval conditions item A were consistent with the uh, one is uh, the comprehensive plan a and B consistent with the land development code so it does fall under the approval of both of those categories which is a big uh, requirement and then under um, item C compatible with surrounding uses there are a variety of uses in that area as you have just heard a question from the chair they right across the street even though there are single-family homes there they front for an office and a building, and I, I'm familiar with uh, one building out there, a residence that has about six or eight trucks <laughs> that come and go on a daily basis. So there are some combined uses where even though there's a home there, it is being used for uh, heavy commercial light and industrial types of activity. Criteria C under uh, compatibility with surrounding conditions the findings that the staff has says that it's not compatible. Uh, if the apartments are constructed, it's not compatible with the single family homes that are next door to it. It's not compatible with the several hundred acres of all of the HCLI across the way. And it's certainly not compatible with uh, MDR, the church to the east. Uh, we would maintain that uh, apartments are compatible with those types uh, of uses, uh, Mr. Chairman. Item C, uh, which is uh, appropriate with change conditions. We agree with staff there's not a lot of change conditions that have happened out that way other than the traffic count on uh, 297A uh, just west of the uh, Pine Forest Road over the past 10 years has increased to almost 38 percent and of course that's because of all the development that's happened to the north of that. So the notion that uh, there's not anything out there that's really changed, uh, heavier traffic is a considerable uh, change in, in that light. And finally Mr. Chairman, the uh, appropriate would change conditions There is an indication that the permitted uses of the proposed district are appropriate and not premature for the area or likely to create or contribute to sprawl. I think that they, uh, their conclusion that it will not contribute to sprawl, uh, we would consider that to be our consistency for uh, item E. Mr. Chairman, the some of the analysis that the staff has, there are a lot of what ifs that are a part of that. Uh, we would like to propose uh, a what if uh, in our scenario. Uh, and again, looking at the uh, map with a parcel that's outlined in blue, the three lots to the east, two of those are owned by a realtor, uh, as this one was at one point. The, the owner now bought it from uh, Ms. Bohannon, uh, but there is likelihood that 
if it was ever redeveloped, the people that are now on that property with a single family home with one, two or, or more acres is not going to turn around and say, I don't need that, uh, the HCLI on the front. You could just take that away. Our, our thinking is somebody's going to want to develop the front of those portions into a uh, heavy commercial light industrial. And, and I know a realtor that wants to expand that to the north. But our thinking is that if that's expanded to the north and it moves to the west, our particular site for heavy, uh, for high density residential would then present itself as a stopgap for the commercial that would be coming from the east and leaving them then as a transitional zoning to protect the single family homes that are on the west side. So Mr. Chairman, those are those are our comments in response to uh, staff findings at this juncture. All right, thank you, sir. Questions? I have a question for staff. What's the breakdown uh, between the two par uh, I My understanding is it's two parcels. No, it's one. one parcel. Well, it's, it's split zone. Okay, okay. What, what percentage of the parcel is zoned HCLI and what, what percentage of the 1.61 acres is LDR? We don't have those extra uh, measurements. Um, usually that's where a survey would come in to do that part. Um, if, by looking at, you know, the area from the map in front of me, I mean, you'd say 90% is probably um, LDR and 10% is ACLI. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, we've made that calculation. It's uh, 0.43 acres, HCLI, the balance then being uh, the uh, low density residential LDR. Okay. So Thanks it's about sure. seventy-five twenty-five. So it is small, but the further east you go, you can see that, that the property uh, moves further south from the line that goes across there. So the piece next to it uh, is going to have uh, closer to two acres, and then it goes up from that to a larger piece uh, on the extreme east. So there's not a whole lot that he can do with that up front uh, in the uh, uh, HCLI category. Uh, but the others certainly certainly could, and if they were combined on several lots, again, we would think that the HDR would be a good uh, buffer between uh, the heavy commercial light and industrial, which is, as you can see from that map, 100% of everything across the street, whether it's got a single family home on it or a single family home that's hosting a, a business behind it, uh, there's more HCLI in this area than almost anywhere within a mile or so. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, how many dwellings can go? How many how many dwellings can go on this piece of property? It's an apartment duplex. I mean, the engineering is not uh, perfect on it, but he thinks he can get between 16 and 18 units on it. 16, 18. Okay. And just for the board and for the public, I'm non voting member. I'm here for the school board just to give uh, advice on certain situations. Same as the Navy here. But um, I will let you know that uh, Pine Forest and Tate, Kingsville, Ransom, you know, well, three of them, Pine Forest is at close to choice now. So there's other developments going in in that area, you know, that don't have to come through this committee. But I will let you know that uh, this being an open discussion of what we're going to do in the future to meet that growth out, out in that area. So it's, it's becoming problematic. <laughs> To say the least. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Page, anything else? That's all. Thanks. All right. All right. We'll have the staff's presentation. Okay. Thank you, Chairman and Board. John Fisher again, Senior Planner. Again, this is zoning case Z2022-12. Uh, this is from LDR Residential District. Uh, four dwellings per acre and split zoned of heavy commercial light industrial uh, 25 dwelling units per acre. Um, the rezoning is to consist uh, proposed is from high density residential district HDR 18, at 18 dwelling units per acre. Under criteria A consistent with the comprehensive plan uh, 
the findings are the proposed amendment to the HDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use category mixed use suburban as stated in CPP FLU 1.3.1. The current FLU allows for residential and non-residential uses while promoting compatible infill development and the separation of urban and suburban land uses. The proposed development will use the existing roads and infrastructure. Under criteria B, consistent with the land development code, the findings are the proposed amendment to HDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The applicant is requesting HDR zoning designation for a parcel totaling 1.61 plus or minus acres. The existing zoning for the parcel are currently LDR and HCLI, which allow for one single family in LDR, but is also very broad in range of uses, which includes retail sales and services and light industrial related activities and intensities in HCLI. HDR only allows for single family and multifamily development and no retail sales or services. The property is surrounded by LDR and HCLI zoning. HDR would limit the allowable uses to residential only and provide a transition between LDR and HCLI on the surrounding properties. Under criteria C, compatible with surrounding uses. The proposed amendment is not compatible with the surrounding uses in the area within 500 foot radius. Staff identified properties within zoning districts LDR, MDR, and HCLI. The parts are currently surrounded by LDR and HCLI zoning in the proposed development would not be consistent with the similar densities and intensities in the area. The existing uses and, and intensities on the ground are mostly single family homes. The allowed uses under the request HDR district would allow for duplex, multifamily, or townhomes, which is not part of the surrounding area. Under criteria D, appropriate if spot zone, if it was determined that the proposed HDR zoning would be considered spot zoning based on the definition due to the density increases for LDR area. However, the request to rezone from LDR and HCLI to HDR will make the parcel equally compatible by use with the adjacent zoning. In existing uses such as single family uses that would not reinforce spot zoning as defined by the LDC, the HCLI area would lose its intensity. The adjacent LDR properties have already developed with single family or vacant property. Therefore, HCLI zoning area there is a mix of single family lots and businesses. Under criteria E, appropriate with change conditions, the land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the properties have not changed for the most part. The following observation and factors are noted. First, the development pattern for those properties that are directly adjacent to the budding and or contiguous to the parcel in question on the north side of 297A is low density residential LDR. As a matter of fact, as shown on the attached zoning map, there is a continuous existing zoning designation of zoning pattern LDR, allowable uses, not HDR. Allowable uses which would allow for more intense residential uses which, with greater densities. Henceforth, this request zoning change from LDR to HDR has the potential to adversely impact and change the historical single family residential pattern of low density residential. In summary, granting the rezoning change from LDR to HR has the potential to allow for more intense residential uses that could alter the character and orderly residential development of the properties on the north side of Highway 297A. Second, there are an existing development conditions and land uses on the south side of Highway 297A, a major artillery roadway that is heavily commercial, light industrial in nature. Now that the existing zoning destination pattern of HLI was primarily part of the original zoning pattern pre-2015 in comparison to pre-zoning destinations pattern of 2015 and the current zoning destination pattern post-2015. There have not been any significant changes to the zoning pattern and or designations on the north side of the property in question or the south side of the property in question. So the zoning destination pattern and development conditions and the land uses within the area of the parcel in question for the most part have not changed as well. Thus, this for supports the determination of criteria not being meet, met. That includes staff findings. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Is an interesting case because on one hand we're saying it provides a nice transition between uh, 
the uh, commercial area and the residential, and then we're saying it's not compatible. So I'm really wrestling with that. I have a question, or more maybe of a statement. On my time on the board, when there are parcels that have been split and they have a higher zoning close to the road, and I would say probably 95% of the time when they come in for a rezoning to the higher level, it's typically granted, just my personal experience, and I don't have any data to back that up, so to speak, but just kind of remembering the cases, would you would you think that that is accurate statement or close to accurate, Horace? I think that's close to accurate, and that's why what we did, based upon that an, uh, 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 analogy, what what the county did, we made a land development code change, because it was it was half and half, half and half, Mr. Mr. Brisket, to be fair, half and half. So what what the county did, the county basically put in a that if a certain percentage is, is greater, that the, the, the greater zoning category could apply without coming through a rezoning process. Right. That's why when we said it was half and half, it was causing problems. Sometimes it was doable and sometimes it wasn't doable. But because of that split zoning, that if you, if you recall, that's why the county tried to get rid of all these split zoning categories. But those parcels that we had that highway commercial frontage, that's what we put in the, and we changed that to that. And, um, and yes, it could be a transition. Well, let me let me ask okay. this. I mean, and I already know the answer, but I just want to hear you say it. HCLI is a more intense use than putting residential apartments on the property. You correct. Are, you you are definitely correct with that. That's why that's why we looked at the existing, the the, the previous zoning change in 2015, and that was already there. So, so it, 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 had, it had the correct zoning and it had the correct uh, 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 zoning destination as well. That's why staff said, wait a minute, do we want to allow on the north side, Highway, to, highway 297, to start a proliferation? Because you start, you start, it can go, go up that, and then it will it cause a problem with those higher zones coming on the north side, which could have an impact. Even if you consider it could be trans transition, it's not transition on on that side, it could be more of a transition on the side with all of the commercial, but not on that side because it's all LDR, existing homes, and and do we, and I believe, uh, Chairman Brisky, that's basically has been sort of the problem, and we had a hodgepodge, we had a disconnect, we didn't have an orderly development pattern. If if we do this one, then we, well, we can create another hodgepodge of zoning and sort of disturbed and create a non oily development pattern in that area. Do we want to do that? That's something that the planning board got to consider. Okay, thank you for that answer. Uh, board members, questions? John, did you have something? Um, I just wanted to just to state um, this zoning case first came in as um, wanting to rezone to LDMU, which would allow for commercial and residential. After speaking with the applicant, it was best decided just to help limit it, get rid of the commercial aspect for that better transition of just going to a residential. So that's why the applicant decided to go to HDR, but the, fit more of the area and help that transition, get rid of some of that commercial aspect as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Questions before we, before we move on? Okay, Mr. Page. I'm sorry. Yeah, go I just, ahead. I just asked, how does a how does a lot get split zone? Because that's another whole history, <laughs> another whole. And I believe you were here, Mr. Powell. Mm -hmm. That was part of all that Zcash study. We had a whole. We we got we got zoning relating to Scammer County, and it was the state directed us to do it, and and, and many of those zoning, many of those uses, and 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 I believe, Mr. It was part of the original zoning scheme. Many of those use was already there, 1989, 1987. The county said, y'all going, going to do this? So we had to do what we had to do. That's why we had a major CCAS study to try to limit. It was, it was not consistent with the comprehensive plan. And that's why we had all these split zoning. And the board, they said, no. 
Or, more commonly said, somebody took out a ruler and drew a line yes. across the map. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> this... There was no order you developed the pattern when it was done. It really when, when you see the ACLI zoning, you see that straight across Nine Mile Road. It's because Nine Mile Road, Pine Forest Road, 297A are minor arterial roads. So it makes sense to put the commercial along state roads or minor arterial roads where the better basically funding is to help keep up the roads and expand the roads. Right. So that's why you have single family homes where they're first on the, you know, on the south side of uh, 297A, but they just swiped a, basically a paintbrush across there and saying this is what your zone. Yeah, I just find it, I guess, like everybody, it'll be interesting to hear the public comment, but if you have that, if I purchase that property, not, you know, we've talked at length about you, we weren't allowed to remove property rights for people who had it. So we typically would go up when the challenge went up or down with a particular property. However, this, what are you going to do with a point, you know, 14%, I guess, of the property that's HCLI? I don't think you can build anything in that little corner, but he does have the right. That property is owned that way. So you guys have given us some challenging ones today. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to go into public comments so we can hear some uh, from the public around the area. And uh, for those members of the public who wish to speak, please note the planning board bases its decisions on the approval conditions and exceptions. During our deliberations, we do not consider general uh, statements of support or opposition. Please limit your testimony to the approval conditions and exceptions described in 2-7.2. And please note that only those individuals who have completed a speaker request form will be allowed to speak and subsequently speak before the hearing at the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, Roger Workman, please. And I think y'all have heard me say it enough. You know the drill, be sworn in and then state your name and address, please. I do. My name is Roger Workman. I live at 2570. Eight uh, Pine Forest Royal, it's in Trailwood Drive. <clears throat> I'm also the homeowner association president. What our biggest concern is is multi-story apartments that we're in fear of it happening. Up there in that shaded area, just north of where he's, his property is, there's that big lot right there that's wooded. There was a a, a, a meeting here, but it's canceled for some reason. That was. Our concern is if, if you make that a high density in that little one right there, the next thing is going to be a cause that's associated with it and next to it and use that same bar pit for drainage is that that'll be high and, they, and it'd be multi apartments up there. That's what we're concerned about. And I don't, it's sort of funny that they, I wouldn't be surprised there's some connection in those two pieces of property. So that's our, not the, not the density, and I don't see what's wrong with MDR. That would stop the the crawl, whatever you're talking about, moving that way. But our concern is these multi, like the one on the south side of Nine Mile Road. They done gone crazy with those multi-story apartments. It's five and six stories high. That's, 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 it just don't fit right there. Thank you, sir. Lorraine Hensler, Hensler. Hi, my name is Lorraine Hensler. I live at 3266 Mountbatten Drive, up 297, just as you passed 97. And after I got here and read the instructions, I had to change my comments to make them fit into the purview and the focus of, of the board. So I have to look at my notes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I live up there, like I said, and I was happy to see that some other people travel that road as well. I'm opposed to uh, going from low density to high density. That's a huge jump for that area up there. Um, to use your terms, it is it is inappropriate and premature. The infrastructure does not, cannot handle um, any more houses up there. I think the concern should be 
about protection of the existing population rather than maybe putting money in somebody's pockets. So um, I think that's the kind of thing that we have to look at. The density and the intensity out there were, were bursting at the seams. I have seen, um, I've lived there for 18 years, and the, instruction, the infrastructure has basically not changed at all. 297A, they made the, it's, it's two lanes, and they made the lanes, each lane a little bit wider, but that's all that they've done. Um, and to use a term I just learned from this gentleman here, um, the accident potential zone. It's very bad. There are no left turn lanes on 297A. And I have seen traffic backed up more than a mile, almost to, to Publix from, to, from 97, because there are no left turn lanes. There have been so many accidents, so many rear ends, because you know people trying to go around somebody on, on, the, on the grass to get around them. And so, um, let's see, flooding is a bad problem out there. After they added those, all the hundreds of homes off of 97, there was an increased uh, problem with flooding, which is already a bad problem because of the creek there. And if you put more houses up there, more concrete means less natural drainage of the land and so even if they put in a retention pond it's just not going to handle it's just not going to handle it and there's going to be more problems with with flooding um i think i think that's about all that i had to say so don't i'm glad you didn't get mad at me if i <laughs> if if i just you know kind of went off off topic there um so again i think it's very inappropriate and, and premature until the infrastructure is um, made a little bit more appropriate, is, in, is increased because I think anybody, if they're going to do anything up there, I invite them to move there for one week and try to drive and it's impossible. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Mark Ca Casta? Casta. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mark Casta, I live at 2570 Trailwood Drive, in the, the big condo area up above there where there's, that's just north of that spot the, of the property. Uh, the biggest concern is that, I've been here before about, I think it was about a year ago, the lot between us and our condo, we're trying to do the exact same thing, convert to high density apartments, and, and uh, that luckily didn't go through. Now we're back here again, it's a different lot. And the concern is, uh, pretty much everybody said everything I'm gonna say, is between traffic, the, um, the potential for flooding with more properties coming in, and just more people in the area. It's just not what that neighborhood's about. The na our neighborhood's about houses and you know, family dwellings. And that's just not a trend we want going through there. And uh, I'm concerned that that's going to be a domino effect. If this goes through on that lot, then it's going to be the next one because they're going to use the precedence that that went through. And uh, that's what we're trying to avoid in our neighborhood. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Larry, you snuck in the middle of the pile on this one. <laughs> Yeah, Larry Downs Jr. It's not it's not looking good for property rights today. Private property rights. It's looking really good for the uh, for the government management of our properties. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, I just really don't see how this doesn't fit all the criteria because it's got the HCLI. It's got the heavy commercial light industrial. You know, it's kind of like whenever uh, <clears throat> the park ranger told me out at the uh, out at Johnson's Beach, you know, with the COVID rules, you know, he said if you got your if you got your toes in the in the wet sand, you're good. But if you got your toes in the dry sand, <laughs> we're uh, we've got the outdoors closed. Sorry, because of COVID. This is kind of like it. This this HCLI is already into it. We're already in it. So I think 
downgrading that front part and and giving them what they you know upgrading the the rear part would be the only right thing to do because they there is enough property to do something there even if it's a uh, even if it's a food truck something they could do some stuff there and they're not going to do that and I get it who 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 wants anybody to do anything on property near them I get it I mean why would anybody want that you know next to your house Mr. Powell your house Mr. Wayne it's just, you, know, you don't want nobody really we don't want nobody doing nothing around us because we're already here and that's where we are if everybody says nothing here nothing there we get nothing Jeez, where are we at <laughs> by the way glad y'all ain't got no, no mask on <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Downs. Mayor O'Connelly? I expect not to. Okay. <laughs> now, if you don't speak here, you won't be allowed to speak at commission meetings. So, okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Cassandra Borg? Okay. I'm Cassandra Borg, and um, I would just like to present to you guys my area of concern um, based on the facts that have been laid out. Um, Section C, with the compatibility of the surrounding area, is my primary, and then Section D with the spot zoning. And, um, Hopefully I, I get this. Can you guys hear me? Is this correct? Yeah. Um, my concern is, I'm kind of going off my notes, was just the compatibility with the surrounding area. We um, own property on 3492-297A. Um, it's just shy of a three acre single family residential home. And our neighbors all, most of them have lived there their whole lives. And they're on similar lots, the same size and the neighborhood behind it north of us butting up just is the same and if you're familiar with that area you know it um, and that's why we you know purchased that property that's why we live there and this proposition does not fit in with the low density with the um, a family single family home use of the large parcel it's not compatible and it's not consistent uh, with the increase in the density especially the level of density <laughs> They were, you know, propositioning, I guess, I think it was 18 units, which I imagine on a 1.5 acre dwelling um, or lot would be two story with a retaining pond, um, which falls in line with the gentleman from the Pine Forest Royale neighborhood. I mean, that would be a concern that also it does not fit in with the surrounding area. There are no two story structures at all that I'm aware of along that area um, and then also the potential for opening the door of that continuation of the high density residential on the adjacent lots I understand that there was a mentioning that that was going to be a buffer or a stopper but you could also go to the other argument that it would open the door for it to continue on um, the potential adverse impacts. I know we weren't supposed to speak about traffic or flood and all that. You did specify that at the outset, but I think in light of just living in that area that we all know that that would also needs to be factored in would be a concern. Um, and that's primarily it, just that it's really not compatible with the families and the um, just the density. It's just a, a, a there's been a lot of growth and I can't imagine you know more of that level of growth on that that main roadway we have a lot of large um, apartment complexes going in near the interstate up towards Beulah out on Nine Mile Road that have the infrastructure the roadways that have been built to meet that demand whereas this has not that's all I have to say thank you 
Thank you for your comments. And I probably wasn't very clear about when we talked about drainage and traffic and things like that. It's not that they're not considered when there's a new development. It's just not considered at this board. So they go through the development review committee, which looks at all of those things, the traffic, the drainage, everything and like our, that. Our, these last few rainstorms, our ditch has been so full it's come up over the driveway. So, I mean, yeah. I can't imagine. So there's a committee, and Horace could speak more about it, but it has the county engineers in it. It has the stormwater people, the traffic folks, emergency access, all of those sit in the DRC. So once an applicant applies to actually build something, then it goes through that process. This is just looking at all of these LDRs, MDRs, HCLIs, and everything uh, in, in compatibility for that. So, and, and, and I guess in addition to that, I know that the, the gentleman representing the owner had stated that, or excuse me, maybe it was with the, are you with the county? I did not get your name, I apologize. Um, stated that they had, um, and if I'm incorrect, correct me, that they had discussed changing this to HDR as a benefit to the area, um, but there was no mention of why it went immediately from LDR to HDR and not MDR. So I don't know if there's anybody to speak so to that. Horace, you might want to explain okay. the process we went through yes, when some yes, of these things um, changed. Yeah. For correction, for correction. It wasn't the LDR was the it was previously R1, which was completely single family dwelling. It's previously RR. Uh, yeah, RR, yeah. So yeah. so and, and, and RR, RR was a residential zoning district. Right. It was incompatible, it's a long history. So when they compatibility, they it was already residential. RR allows for single family large lots. So that area was was transferred over to LDR, which allows for large lots as well in order to help with compatibility and the future land use category that we had a hard time doing in the first place but so everything is everything is in order ldr rr it was i, I believe her qu fold. the question that she was asking was why is mdr not being looked at because mdr is what the same as ldr right. one single family dwelling per lot right. so they wouldn't be able to do duplexes so um they could no, no, there's a so there's a different. No, it's we're not talking about density. We're not talking about density. We're talking about the type of use. The use is LDR is four dwellings per acre. MDR is ten dwellings per acre. What that means, though, is they could do MDR here, but they would have to go through a subdivision review process and divide it into separate lots. So you could have a house per lot, mm -hmm. or they could go HDR and do duplexes and just put duplexes on it without having to go through a subdivision review process. So MDR would require a subdivision review process. Correct. If they for them to put, you know, ten dwellings per acre on there, you know, go through that phase, and put a. So it's MDR is one unit mm -hmm. per lot. This is one lot right now. So they they would have to create lots on it right. in order to do that. Duplexes. You can put five duplexes on a lot because HDR allows for that consolidation of multifamily. MDR does allow for townhomes outright, so you could have sm compact housing too, the same as HDR. They just have to go through a different subdivision review process. Right, okay. It's good to know. Thank you. Nice and simple, right? <laughs> Believe me, our heads spin up here sometimes too with it. Uh, Mr. Bork, uh, you're up next, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, is there anyone else who has not spoken at this point that wishes to speak on this uh, case? All right, hearing none, we will hereby close the public comment portion of the meeting. Mr. Page, give you an opportunity to come back and uh, cover the criteria that the staff's findings uh, find deficient. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> A question of... Uh of staff, if that might be appropriate for clarification, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And, and following up on, on some of your questions a little bit earlier, uh, John, if I could direct this to you. If we were to apply for HCLI, it would seem to me that that would be found to be consistent with a comprehensive plan, given, that, given the surroundings. Correct. 
if we had uh, requested that, it would be consistent with the land development code. And it would certainly be compatible with everything that's around it, almost everything. Except for the intensity and what's existing on the ground, as it's the same stated in the, the current But also, it would not be uh, spot zoning. Let me, let me, let me, Mr. Page, yes. um, just in looking at it, it is too, in looking at it, it would be premature for us to make such a vast judgment if, just looking at it, if this would have went to ACLI, as me being a director and looking on the criteria, I would have wholeheartedly objected to it. Because, because, uh, again. Well, as long as you're objecting with grounds yes, that we can discuss I would, here. I would have objected, number one, compatibility. Yeah. Number one, not, you just can't look at what crosses the street. How would 297 is a, it's separate by major road. That proliferation, right. that would have been spot zoning. Yes, it had a little portion to make all of our ACLI that would impact those surrounding commutes, surrounding uses. Well, you didn't make a finding of spot zoning here. Right, but but because of the uses of a, that all the ACI would have bring, that would have been that would have been a, that would have been a hard heavy commercial would have brought in. Oh my God, almost any any type the potential for a litany of adverse uses. So just by being looking at it wholeheartedly. That would, it would have been hard for me to say yes with my staff. We would have had ample discussions. And we bring, we bring it here and discuss it in front of the board. Right. Let's not go to ACLI. That would have, that would have been a hard pill. Horace, I'm, I'm asking a question. Okay. That would have been a hard pill. Again, that would have been a hard pill for us to spot. I might point out to you, too, that there was never a finding of spot zoning on the application that we have fine. here now. That's fine. You said that there may be, it may be considered. But you have to make a finding. That word is very, very important. Appropriate would change conditions. I think that uh, everything we have across the street would have supported that. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I'm not, I'm not so sure that uh, your words uh, were lost on us about the inquiry, about coming back uh, and asking for something that probably would have done all of these things, in spite we may have had to, a big debate over it. Uh, but, John, what would the final question, what would be the density allowed under HCLI? The density under HCLI is 25 dwellings per acre. Okay, so it would have it would have fit in terms of density and location. It would not have been spot zoning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we probably could have made a pretty good case for that, but this, this uh, presentation here today was advertised differently, so I'm not sure that uh, we could change uh, at this uh, particular juncture. Uh, but it certainly uh, was food uh, for thought. But outside of that, Mr. Chairman, I have no other, no other comments. Okay. And since, and, and since Mr. Page made those, if, if he wanted to withdraw his case, withdraw it, he has the potential to make that, it would have, because if that, you cannot change, and that is an up zoning. So he would have to withdraw his case, we have to review it and let staff make their complete analysis and we would look into it. So, so it would have to be withdrawn based upon his request, and he paying all of the fees for all of that because that would require completely rezoning, start over. Okay. Board members, questions, comments? Sure. Mr. Adams? I, did you bring up the satellite of those, those lots, well, it's pretty big acres north of the, the blue square. Between it and the subdivision, is that undeveloped there all the way back to Pine Forest? Okay. So those those could possibly That's be developed pit. along with this for. That's the bar pit. Huh? That's the bar pit. This is a bar pit? Yeah. Well, you know, we had a bar pit, pit in, in Beulah, and we have a public sitting on it right now. Okay, so I don't. <laughs> they went in there and they dug everything out and they filled it in with dirt a lot. <laughs> But anyway, so I, I'll just so you're saying because that borrow pit, those two lots, the two big ones next to the subdivision, would not be able to be developed. Is that what the gentleman's trying to tell me? Were you trying to tell me the two big parcels right beside the subdivision couldn't be developed because of the borrow pit? Oh no. Okay. No. Okay. 
Question of staff. Um, what's the actual use of the properties, the two properties to the east of this one? Are they any kind of businesses that are non-conforming or MH, just, is that mobile home? Yes, mobile home. Then you have a multifamily to the one to the next. So there's a multifamily, two properties over. Go back to that uh, aerial satellite, please. What What is that multifamily? Is that just like several? Probably a houses? duplex or something like that. You know, it could have been a ha it looks like a house that might have been split, but that's what the, the tax the property appraiser has it is multifamily. Multi so they got two different tax IDs on there. I got a question for Horace. Is there a penalty or a difference if no. this does not get approved? He has the ability to reapply for HCLI. Which so there's no there's no advantage or disadvantage from him withdrawing it at this point in time if he wants to go HCLI at a later time. Is that a correct statement? Um Yeah, yeah, he would have to he would have to withdraw and pay all of the fees associated with it and step up basically start over with everything if he wanted to do that stuff. We'll look at that and I yeah. But if he he could he could do that also even if we're he he keeps it and we deny it today he could turn around and reapply for HCLI six, or six months. It's a time limitation. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's, what, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Time limitation. Yes. I don't think there's no real benefit. I think Mr. Page's point was he has HCLI on there, and I think he was in attempting to acquiesce with county to have a transitional, but we've run right up into the. Is it transitional or is it opening Pandora's box for what folks on the uh, west side do not care for? And that's my concern. That's my concern that you would. That's my concern that you would open up Pandora's box for that. That's my concern. That's what we have to. And, and that's why. But if we can't. But if we can't consider what ifs on that, you, I don't think we. That's fair that we do it for going next. I, I'm just saying on behalf of the. That's not. Mm -hmm. Fair. I mean, if we have to look at what it could potentially be on this particular lot. Mm -hmm. That's understandable, even though they say, oh, we'll never do that. There could be this here. But I don't know that it's fair that we say, well, you know, if we let that, you know, crack the door of that, it, it allows for it to just go rampant to the west of that. I mean, we have to. There's got to be a transition. Mm -hmm. What's we, the transition? We, How do you define it at, at some we, point? There's a, I would consider the, on that side of the road a transition. I mean, yes. Yes, you do have, that's a, that is a zoning category that allows for a transition, but you have to look at the surrounding uses as well. You have to look at the, you have to look at all of those areas on that, on that side of the road. Basically, it is all single family homes. And that's where, that's where we have to look at. Horace, what is the buffering requirements? If this was granted and he moved forward with the 18 units, what would be the buffering requirements around the property? Uh, is there a tree buffer fencing? I believe it's 16 feet. Yes. Okay. Can you zoom in a little bit? What is, it appears that there is like an easement or an old road that goes to the west right there. Can you, what? Yes, Mr. Page. Mr. Chairman, that shows up on the uh, property appraiser is 14.51 uh, a property that uh, has a, a uh, opening that, well, you can see it on here, that goes right past this due north. Uh, we would consider that certainly to be a, some type of a buffer to start with, even though if this was approved, additional buffers would have to go on top of that. Right, I'm just trying to um, understand what that's a different ownership. That's not ownership that goes with this parcel, correct? It, I'm, uh, I'm not sure who the owner of that is. It goes considerably north of the site. Here it is. Dell Inc. Bond Drive. So it goes. The property use says uh, um, right of way. 
So it gives right away to north. And Mr. Mr. Chair, would it be fair to say again, we're right up against density issues again, because yeah. right now LDMU, they can do six per acre as opposed to the potential what they could do with the, the up current zone. Any other board comments or questions? Um, if not, we're ready for a motion. Card in case Z2022 TAC 1-2 Based on staff's findings, specifically criteria C and E, I recommend denial. Okay. Do we have a second to the motion for denial? I'll second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor of denial, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. So we have uh, three in favor and two opposed. Okay, so the motion carries for denial. Mr. Page, I've, you've been through this many times. You obviously know you have an opportunity to plead your case to the county commissioners. Those of you that spoke uh, will be allowed to speak at the county commissioners as well. And uh, good luck with it, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anything else for the rezoning hearing today? All right, we will hereby close the rezoning meeting and move directly into our regular planning board meeting. I'd like to hereby call to order the regular planning board meeting for August 2nd, 2022. We do have a quorum. We are missing two of our voting members, but have all the rest of our members present. Do we have proof of publication of the regular planning board meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, and does that meet all of the legal requirements? Yes, sir. Okay, Chair will entertain a motion to accept, excuse me, to waive the reading of the legal. So motion, do we have a second? So second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting minutes for the previous uh, meeting were provided. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion to accept as is. So moved. Motion. Do we have second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Planning board hearing package for August 2nd has previously been provided to board members. Chair will entertain a motion to accept that hearing package and the legal advertisement into evidence. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We will come back to the follow-up reports and go directly into public hearing five uh, public hearing concerning a review of ordinance amending chapter four article two floodplain management all right good morning hey you cleared the room one good morning mr chair <laughs> my board members marlene was with development services santa rosa island authority i'm sorry sir uh, so again i'm here uh, and i guess i'm gonna say that I'm, I, I won't speak on behalf of the county. However, uh, the result of uh, what we bring in front for your consideration and your recommendation today uh, is basically the same for both jurisdictions. As you all very uh, well know, under the National Flood Insurance Program, Escambia County is a separate jurisdiction, and so is uh, the Santa Rosa Island Authority, the town of Century, and the city of Pensacola. Uh, we had a courtesy visit by the federal government back in December. They do this uh, periodically with all the jurisdictions in Florida uh, to kind of review our uh, flood regulations uh, to make sure the language and all the standards uh, meet the minimum requirements from the, uh, from the federal government. Um, it's been a few years since they've done one of these, so they, of course, found a few things that have changed. 
um, laws change, uh, regulations change. Uh, so part of their job is to make sure that we are starting compliance with those federal regulations. Uh, very few changes. We work along with, uh, with your legal counsel and the Santa Rosa Authority, uh, Authority Legal Counsel. Uh, both of your flood plan administrators in the county uh, and the Allen Authority myself uh, to make sure that all the language that needed to be removed, replaced, updated on our uh, flood plan regulations within the Land Development Code um, is going to be compliant. So, so it was a process that uh, probably took us about, well, since December when we found out that we needed to make some changes. Uh, so what you have in front of you is the resulting uh, two ordinances. Uh, there are FEMA compliant language wise, uh, basically to update uh, online development code regulations for flood plain management for both jurisdictions. They both contain within the land development code. Uh, I'll be more than glad to answer any specific questions. Um, the biggest changes in there, if you haven't had an opportunity to read it, uh, is a few definitions that change. Uh, market value is one of those, so how we calculate market value for a property. Um, lots of uh, uh, the uh, references to uh, chapter to the different chapters on the Florida Building Code change and for some reason they do not like the way ordinances read um, as how we call ordinance versus article uh, so this is the majority of the changes on the language on both of those ordinances for the land development code and any questions specific that you have um, the standards have not changed we still maintain the three foot the three foot free board for both jurisdictions um, you're aware that uh, the, the flood regulations in the Allen Authority are a little more stringent than the ones that we have in the county, so um, all those standards remain as they were prior to FEMA reviewing it. Um, they added uh, a, bit, a bit of language uh, re in reference to uh, accessory structures, the size and what they can be used for. Um, but other than that, yeah, it pretty much the same ordinance, they just polished up all the right references in accordance to the federal regulations. Okay. And any questions that you may have, I'll be glad to try to answer. Well, I was just going to ask, does it alter the uh, insurance company's ability to uh, translate what is and what isn't? Does it alter their uh, ability to wiggle out or not? No, no, sir. I, I don't think it does. I mean, they, they absolutely has, uh, and I won't say it won't have anything to do with the insurance company. But you know, they, they, they adopted that RIS 2.0 back in April. It went full blown across the United States. Um, so, so the stuff that they used to look at is kind of no longer, they have their own standards now, but the stuff they look for, they kind of change a lot. Lots of people realize that the changes on the flood insurance, I mean, everybody should know by now how much their flood insurance changed. So, but this has no effect on uh, um, the changes that we're that we're proposing with these ordinances have no effect on on the flood on the on the uh, flood insurance application. Okay. Any other questions? Chair will entertain a motion. Um, we don't have any speakers on this um, case. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. The next item, uh, discussion item, similar uh, subject. So basically it was backwards and uh, so I appreciate you giving me the time to talk about the flood ordinances. Uh, my board did approve, and I say my board, the Santa Rosa Island Authority Board uh, did approve, review and approve this last month on both of their hearings. Uh, so I just wanted to make you aware, inform you that they have actually already uh, recommended approval for the Board of County Commissioners, so I want to make sure that you guys stay on top of it, that you guys understand that we have gone through the process on that side of the, on that side of the island, um, that, that I have followed the procedures according to their, their standards. All right, very good. So, thank you. Anything thank else on that item, discussion item? All right, hearing none, we'll go into public forum. Mr. Larry Downs. Since I'm the only one, would like to request just one extra minute and and you ain't even gonna have to listen to me I could read this this is a this is from this is just for general general purposes uh, I could read this from this writer from Australia or I could just have this guy who reads it really fast it's a pleasure of the board and, and uh, okay no, no foul way. language there's none of that just good old-fashioned it's PG Absolutely, it's PG. Go ahead, run it. All right. 
to you what I think is one of the most eloquently stated statements about what we have just been through and what we must all recognize is now the truth. And for those of you who have been watching The High Wire, this one's for you. Let this sink in. An opinion piece from a vaccinated Australian writer is what it's called. If COVID was a battlefield, it would still be warm with the bodies of the unvaccinated. Thankfully, the mandates are letting up and both sides of the war stumble back to the new normal. The unvaccinated are the heroes of the last two years as they allowed us all to have a control group in the great experiment and highlight the shortcoming of the COVID vaccines. The unvaccinated carry many battle scars and injuries as they are the people we tried to mentally break. Yet no one wants to talk about what we did to them and what they forced the science to unveil. We knew that the waning immunity of the fully vaccinated had the same risk profile as others within society as the minority of the unvaccinated, yet we marked them for special persecution. You see, we said that they had not done the right thing for the greater good by handing their bodies and medical autonomy over to the state. Many of the so-called health experts and political leaders in Australia admitted the goal was to make life almost unlivable for the unvaccinated which was multiplied many times by the collective mob, with a fight taken into workplaces, friendships, and family gatherings. Today, the hard truth is none of it was justified as we took a quick slide from righteousness to absolute cruelty. We might lay the blame on our leaders and health experts for the push, but each individual within society must be held accountable for stepping into the well-laid-out trap. We did this despite knowing full well that principled opposition is priceless when it comes to what goes inside our bodies and we let ourselves be tricked into believing that going into another ineffective lockdown would be the fault of the unvaccinated and not the fault of the toxic policy of ineffective vaccines. We took pleasure in scapegoating the unvaccinated because after months of engineered lockdowns by political leaders blinded by power, having someone to blame in turn to burn at the stake felt good. We believed we had logic, love, and truth on our side, so it was easy to wish death upon the unvaccinated. Those of us who ridiculed and mocked the non-compliant did it because we were embarrassed by their courage and principles and didn't think the unvaccinated would make it through unbroken. And we turned the holdouts into punching bags. Lambie, Carr, Chan, Andrews, McGowan, Gunner, and the other cast of hundreds in prominent roles. And we here in America, we could add Fauci and the rest of them and Biden in prominent roles need to be held to account for vilifying the unvaccinated in public and fueling angry social media mobs. The mobs, the masked Nazis, and the vaccine disciples have been embarrassed by betting against the unvaccinated because mandates only had the power we gave them. It was not compliance that ended domination by big pharma companies, Bill Gates, and his many organizations, and the World Economic Forum. It was Thanks to the people we tried to embarrass, ridicule, mock, and tear down. We should all try and find some inner gratitude for the unvaccinated as we took the bait by hating them because their perseverance and courage bought us the time to see we were wrong. So if mandates ever return for COVID or any other disease or virus, hopefully more of us will be awake and see the rising authoritarianism that has no concern for our well-being and is more about power and control. The war of the unvaccinated was lost, on the unvaccinated was lost. And we should all be very thankful for that. Holy moly. Hey, y'all remember Governor Abbey? Blame the unvaccinated folks. Blame them. So, we made it out (laughs) without it. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Horace, director's review. Anything you want to go over? You're still processing. Are you speechless now? Okay. Um, um, uh, Let's talk about the planning board meeting. Next planning board meeting is September 13th, is the following Tuesday of our normal one. Uh, For sure, we have a very large rezoning case that will be coming, 
and potentially a few ordinances. Right. It's very, it's very, if you cannot make it, uh, please, so make sure, let us know in time, because we got it. That's going to be a full, full agenda. We got the potential for a major, major comprehensive plan project that's coming, the, the public meeting. Uh, so we do, that's going to be very, very critical that we have a quorum so we can discuss that. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, it would now be a time that I possibly uh, I wrote down this issue about our conditional uh, zoning. That I was going to move to request that the Board of County Commission, that we recommend to the Board of County Commissioners to grant planning and zoning staff the latitude to create conditional rezoning applications only when necessary. Any such case would need to verify the unique nature of a specific change to warrant conditional consideration. I mean, respectfully, I cannot do that without a land development code change. I can't, I can't unless, it's, unless it goes to the proper LDC, getting it codified inside the LDC, I don't have the authority to well, do I think that. what that he's doing is asking that this be presented to the Board of County Commissioners and get them to discuss it. Up for an ordinance change. Yes, to add quick. it to the land development code. Right. Um, well, let me point of order here. Um, we have a second to the motion. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion. Horace, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, and, and maybe Matt, you may jump in here too. But many years ago, it was either Board of Adjustment or Planning Board. There was a mechanism where the county could enter into specific agreements not necessarily written in the land development code, but there was a limitation that could be written in. Um, and I don't remember exactly what the terminology was that was used, but um, do we know any mechanism like that? Uh, there, there isn't. That there, I mean, the county can enter in, the county can enter in development agreements which is regulated by state statutes for certain for certain projects if the county wants to partner with that, but but that does not come to the board would have to, but not for small scale rezonings. Uh, if a larger side of the county get into the like development agreement and and things like that, but we've had those in the long, long past, but it's for larger. That's another whole set of rules that's governed by state legislation as well. So, but there's no small I mean, scale. Play and, and and I, I support this discussion because we need to we need to find a way to to handle these very unique cases. I mean, obviously, playing devil's advocate, that the problem is it opens Pandora's box, and then you say, well, you can use the discretion anytime you want. So I, but we have to. There has to be some gray area in the middle here where we can work with these things because uh, I agree. With, think it's needed or at least a discussion is needed so I think it's evident that as time marches on as we get into these more and more there's going to be more times where we have county staff to say well maybe and I don't fault you for that I hate the fact that you have to divide it between black and white and a lot of times I obviously disagree with you and, but and you guys are like doesn't hurt my feelings because you have to pull the trigger one side or the other and I think that if a Particular, I mean, there's a lot of thought process, and you know, Horace, you have a lot of sway when you get up here and you're explaining the rules. That also tends to move people one way or the other. I, I don't, that's just human nature. I'm not putting that on you, but the same thing applies when you guys get together to write up this information. I think that will give you a lot of confidence. You should be able to determine if this is a unique situation. There could be a way for you to come to terms to make something actually work using some, you know, simple logic, I think. Now, maybe I'm making it sound too easy, um, yes, but I, I think that if, you know, right now, there's no avenue, so that's just off the table. I, I, I mean, it, it, the, code is, the code is black and white, and, 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 and when you, and, and we have these challenges, and, and I can't defend personal opinions or ideas or what I think is good, they don't look at the letter of the law. I, I, I was looking at some law of the land cases yesterday from different communities. 
and they look at those land use specifics, those regulations. And yes, good lawyers can regulate it and, and maybe work it, but as far as me, they just say, where is it written? Where is it? So they're going to look at the black and white language. So, so yes, facts are different. Sometimes circumstances are different. Um, these were unique cases today. They were unique. They was different. Um, yes, same time. And basically, and the, same, this, this, the same issues at hand. That's how sometimes it happens like that. Um, that's how. So especially when, you, especially when you're making such an enormous jump up like that. So we have to, we have to look at it because these things, they, they can be challenged. Um, uh, so, and I have to be careful. I've been to enough court proceedings. To, I don't want to see no more okay. in my lifetime. The gentleman has a motion. It has been properly second. Uh, any further discussion before we take a vote? And just to clarify, you'd like the commissioners to at least discuss this option um, and let's talk about the positives and negatives and I'm sure legal will have to weigh in and Definitely. make sure what the legal aspects of it are. That that appears to be the biggest opposition I would think would be the legal defense of these things uh, if we did something like that. Is that... If you know, I can't do Mr. Brisky. I have not researched this issue that okay. came up today. Um, but it would, it would seem that an appropriate motion would be a request to the Board of County Commissioners to um, discuss possibly adding Con language to allow for conditional rezonings. Yeah. Okay. The logistics of that I cannot speak to today. Okay. All right. Motion in a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So we'd like to, uh, Horace or Matt, whoever may go through legal or directly to your, to the administrator. Uh, at least begin that conversation and, um, you know, let's hear what their opinions are and I'm sure Allison will have a lot to say about it. So tell Allison we said hi. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, scheduling, we've already talked about that. Is there anything else for the meeting? All right, then we are adjourned. We only went five minutes past noon, so. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Well, he does a great job. Thank you. Thank you for attending. All right, buddy. We'll see you later.